your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Good. Well, welcome oh. home, family. It's oh, your, your mom, mom and dad. dad. <laughs> what good was morning. That? It's called good. It's called. We're you, recording. You just. You just. You were starting to say good I know, morning. I'm sorry. We guys. have a pattern. This is part of what we do. It's corny. It's cheesy. That's how we start <laughs> off these episodes. We're a 50s you can't, television show. You cannot start off with a good morning. Well, we're recording a little earlier than we normally do. It's a little early, and we and are. And are we is, morning people? No, I don't think so. I don't know if I'm a night person anymore either. (laughs) I'm just just a day person. I think I'm kind of like a 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. person. I just like I've always been a big, you know, fall asleep in the chair while talking guy. Sure, But uh, it's been on 10 lately. It's been on 10 lately. The lazy energy. Uh, This like past week, it was we spent so much time just together and mm-hmm. with Ember mm-hmm. and really like off the phones, full focus. And it was so wonderful. It was pretty awesome. Like it was such a memorable, wonderful week that we had together. But now I don't want to. You do lost anything. your edge. I lost. I got, I got, I'm so lazy. I got it's a like, list of stuff. And now with the holidays coming up, you know, there's a list of things. You're like, I gotta do this. gotta do this. I want to tear that list up, throw it into the fire. I got nothing. It's it's really interesting. Like when you go on vacation or you do anything like that, I always notice, at least for me, it's like the first two days mm-hmm. are like, you're still kind of anxious and you're kind of like still in work mode. And yeah. then like after like day three, you kind of start, start to get in. Uh-huh. But if you go on a five day vacation, it's like then on day five, you're finally just like in it and then you got to go back home. And like we just... I feel like with our vibe, just doing like the family relaxation vibe last week, it's oh. like... It's like, I just got to the place where I'm like ready to chill now. <laughs> yeah. And it's like back to work, back to life. So we are edgeless. Yeah. We are. Um, we are lazy bones right now. So sorry for whatever energy that's going to bring, man. Hey, bro. I'm just chilling, man. I'm yeah. just laid back as ever, man. My eyes are half awake. You started this episode off with. Good, Good morning. morning. I mean, Apologies what are all you around. out of it? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> oh, good morning, everybody. Dude, Ember got a new bed. It's so comfy. I'm moving into her bedroom. Oh, yeah. Ember officially got her big girl bed. Yeah, she got the big girl bed, and it's unbelievable. Not that she, <laughs> not that she was still in a she crib. She was in a crib <laughs> as of last week. That sounds wild. Like, <laughs> yeah. She got her big girl bed. We've had her in a crib this whole time. No, 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 she no. was like in a kid's bed. She was in a kid's bed, and now she's got like a adult bed, and it's right. definitely more comfortable than ours it so is. we're gonna have to switch bedrooms like gosh well it's like for the longest time she well now she really wants to sleep with us like she really wants for like mom can you come sleep Slumber with parties, me yeah, yeah. Dad, can you come sleep in my bed i'm not like before it was like sorry you got a little kid's bed i can't i, could, I would like crunch in and kind of be like there for like mm-hmm. 40 minutes and then leave but now i'm in oh, now yeah. it's a vibe Now it's a full family pile. It is a pile, man. But yeah, it was, I hope you all have been doing so well. Um, Last week, like I said, it was just, it was Ember's birthday. We just spent so much quality time together. It had been a minute since like all of us spent Mm -hmm. like numerous, like really quality time, quality days together without like anything, busyness, no sickness. Uh Um, It was just absolutely wonderful. We did so much walking. We walked and walked and walked. We did. And pet a lot of dogs. (laughs) Yeah. Have we talked about this on the podcast, the dog walk? I don't know. So when we go to a a restaurant, any public place Mm -hmm. could be a park anything anything any place where there is dogs yeah ember does this thing where she goes can i go on a dog walk (laughs) and that means that she goes from person to person anyone who has a dog she just walks up and goes excuse me can i pet your dog and then she goes and she just lays on the ground with them and like pets (laughs) them and like kisses them and then she goes dog to dog so I'm, i'm telling you if we're in a restaurant oh yeah where there's like six like an outdoor patio where there's like seven dogs she will hit every single one. Then she'll come back, tell us about each dog, 
And then she does this thing she gives called an award. Dog of the Day. Where she goes, like, she, she won't give it just at the restaurant. Because you might, if we're on a walk, might see it on the dog. If we go to a park later, there might be more dogs. It's at the end of the day. She goes, dog of the day. I'd have to say <laughs> it, it was, was Lucy. <laughs> it was Lucy because she was so sweet and she was also so nice and she laid on her belly. You know, like, it's like dog of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so it's, 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 it's very official too it's not like it's just like oh i gotta go my, she goes at the dog walk yeah she goes i gotta go on a dog walk and we own dogs and then she's not talking about taking our dogs on a walk she's no, talking no, about she's seeing like, dogs on a walk the dog walk the dog walk with oh. the dog of the day and she makes me laugh so hard too because you know she is oh so your child where it's like you know members of the family i don't know what their name is but i will remember every dog's name that I meet. <laughs> no she'll literally be just like uh, who's that person again like uh tall guy brown hair it's like you mean your uncle it's like <laughs> yeah something like that anyway his dog lucy is unbelievable <laughs> and i and i have never felt so seen. I know you two are absolute peas in a pod my, in that way. My fate. I saw. We saw our sister. I oh, sorry. Our sister. I saw my sister. Uh-huh. She's got a bunch of kids. Love her husband. Love her kids so much. Love family. It's all great. She got a new dog. Mm-hmm. They rescued a the pit bull. That rescued is. a pit bull. Oh, that's my favorite family member. <laughs> Officially. I just laid on the ground the whole time. And just cuddled and kissed this dog for an hour. More than and that. Th- and then we left. It was more than that. I let you talk to Family people. Family was engaging with each other. We were having a wonderful yeah. time. Yeah. And Evan was, was in the corner th- with the dog. I was 0% interested in anyone. <laughs> I just wanted to be with the puppy. Like, honestly, if I could have just taken the dog for the day and then let, picked you up later. Ideal day. God, if you don't. I mean, I just. How could you not love them? <laughs> like, I just love dogs. They're just, they're just incredible. I think maybe it's just that it's that unconditional love. I think so. That we're all searching for in life. Mm -hmm. They give, you know, they give it to you. So if you're not a dog person, help me understand. (laughs) Help me understand. And I love cats. Don't get me wrong. Super cute. But I need something to grab. Yeah. And kitties don't love the grab. Well, you need to meet the right kitty. Maybe that's you, it. You know what I think for I've you. Had a really scarred history with the you, kitties. You do you do have some some rough history with the kitties. I think you gotta find the right kitty for you. Mm. But you you and your dogs, you and God, your you them. and your daughter, you two are absolute peas. It's just like the life source is the dog. We we love our puppies. We were talking about this and I'm sure that it's like some comedian's bit. Or something. Who knows? We might have even talked about this on the podcast before. But genuinely, I'm more starstruck by a dog than if I were to see a celebrity out. A hundred percent. Like if like like a like a great dog. Yeah. Like if Meryl (laughs) Streep walked into the cafe, Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Meryl Streep. Wow. If a little wiener dog comes trotting into the cafe, Stars in my eyes. I can't stop thinking about that dog. Oh, I'm obsessed. It's just like for the next dachshund. week, I'm just like, oh my God, that little docks. And I just, I'm losing my mind. Like, and I'll forget later in the day that I saw Meryl Streep, but I'm not going to forget about that dog. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like, I let's say I see, I see Tom Hardy in a Starbucks. Yeah. Okay. I see Tom Hardy and I go, whoa, there's Tom Hardy. And that's it. Yeah. I can't go over to him and go, and hey, <laughs> big boy. And tell him I love him, which I do to all dogs. You know what I'm saying? So like, I can't walk over and go, I love you. And then get on the floor and pet him. Even if I'd want to, it would not be advised. No, they would probably call security. I'd probably be arrested. So so take the celebrity. I'm not interested. Give me the precious dachshund. Now, I'll tell you something that's devastating. Uh Uh-oh. When you see a delectable dog. Yeah. And they are not social. That can be emotionally taxing. Because for sure. it's like it can, me it can and me really and my daughter need it so bad yeah. <laughs> that like it's like what? It's like it's like meeting your hero and realizing they're like an asshole. You know, you're like, wait yeah. a second. Yeah, you they, were supposed to be nice and say, no problem. Come with me. I'll take you under my wing. They say, don't meet your heroes don't about meet your celebrities, heroes. but they were for evidence the dogs. For, for me, it's seeing an unbelievably cute dog. And then they're like, sorry, we don't, you know, you can't pet it. And I'm like, why did you bring it outside? Someone says like, yeah, sorry, no, just not, I'm, I'm just not bad. I'm, I'm like, what? 
<laughs> citizens arrest. <laughs> citizens arrest. I don't even know what that is, but I'm using it on you. <sighs> so, anyway, that was our week. <laughs> that was pretty much most of what it was. <laughs> was celebrating Ember 24 mm-hmm. 7 and dogs. Dogs, and, and we petted many dogs. So, hope you all had a wonderful week as well. Well, we have, <laughs> we have a very very special guest yes. today um, and want to talk to you all about our guest that's coming on um, in a second but we have to take a quick pause yes take a quick pa- quick pause because family we are a coffee household i'm talking morning noon and night type Cheers. coffee household and we are seriously so thrilled to be partnered up with this company because mm-hmm. we have been using their product for years huge yes. fans and when i say using their product for years i mean evan is the one who makes the coffee so he's been using it and i've been <laughs> reaping the delicious benefits of their product okay we're talking about aeropress oh my gosh aeropress is so easy so convenient so fast and it makes the best cup of coffee okay the best cup of coffee it's completely unique in flavor a little french press a little espresso a little pour over all in one uniquely delicious cup it's so good like just said i've been using it for honestly easily five six years it's the best and it's easy that's the thing too it's like you're getting like a real deal cup of coffee very easily it's delicious it's uh, durable. You yeah. can like throw it, you know, it's like made of like this really tough material. You throw it in like, honestly, it's my go-to it's the cup best. of coffee. Um, AeroPress is like a French press, only better. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the only press that uses a patented three-in-one brewing technology, combining the best of several brew methods into one portable device for a completely unique and delicious flavor profile. Uh, it brews and cleans in less than two minutes. And all you have to do is add medium fine coffee grounds, pour in hot water, stir for five seconds, brew for 30 seconds, then press into your favorite mug and enjoy. It's I amazing. Mean, brew and clean in less than two minutes. Seriously, people. it's like, sh- okay. Okay. And obviously with it being that easy, it makes it so perfect to use anywhere, right? Yeah. On trips and hotels, camping, anywhere. AeroPress truly travels better than others. It's compact and like Evan said, incredibly durable. I could easily put this in my backpack, my glove compartment, whatever, and you're going to have that delicious coffee. There is a reason why AeroPress is the barista's favorite home brewing tool. AeroPress is the best reviewed coffee press on the planet, okay? With more than 55,000 five-star reviews. And this is the gift. This is the gift, the perfect gift. Thoughtful, proven, and under $50. AeroPress is the perfect gift or stocking stuffer for every coffee lover in your life this holiday season. Don't settle for less than the best. The people in your life will love it. You will love it too. AeroPress is shockingly affordable, less than 50 bucks, like I said. And we've got an incredible offer for all of you. Visit AeroPress.com slash mom dad. That's a E R O P R E S S dot com slash mom dad and save up to 20%. That's aeropress.com slash mom dad to save up to 20%. It's time to ditch the drive through, toss the French press, and say yes to better mornings fueled by better coffee. Aeropress ships to the US and over 60 countries around the world. And we thank Aeropress for sponsoring our show. Aeropress.com slash mom dad. It's the best. Seriously. It's so good. The best. Um, Okay, so we have a special guest on today. I do want to say this before we chat about our guest. um, Upcoming schedule for the for next week. So this is our one episode for this week. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening to this on Wednesday, you know that tomorrow, Thursday is the airing of the finale of The Golden Bachelor. We're going to find out. Isn't it darling? It's absolutely darling. We're going to find out. It's going to be a darling (laughs) We're going to find out what delightful lady uh, Gary will be proposing to, I think. I guess you never know. Maybe he doesn't propose anybody. I think he said he's with someone. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we will Aye. see. Um, and then they do have also a BIP episode airing after that. So here's what we're going to do. Um, next week on Monday, we are going to drop our recap of the Golden Bachelor finale. Yeah. And then on Wednesday, we are going to drop our recap of Bachelor in Paradise. And then the following week, we will also have an episode on Monday with Bachelor in Paradise. Yeah. So um, that is, and I think that's the Bachelor in Paradise finale. Then the following is that? Week, oh I believe gosh. so. So what that's the schedule for right I'm now. Sad. I don't want it to come to an end. I know. I feel pretty sad anyway. about the Golden Bachelor ending. I'll be real with you. Um, but Put another one out. Time for another one, baby. Um, but 
today, mm-hmm. we have a very special guest coming on. In fact, we did record with this person yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've already had our experience with him. Mm-hmm. And it was, what you're going to listen to is, um, it was very emotional yeah. for us. Um, it was, it got really personal. It was really special. Yeah. We laughed, we cried. Um, it was really a gift. Yeah. And uh, we have Thomas Dale yes. who's going to be joining us. And listen, if you are an OG listener, you know that uh, Thomas was on Chatty Broads years ago and did um, a reading with Becca and myself. And then he came on the bros um, maybe about a year ago, yeah. year and a half ago yeah, something now. Like that. Um, and did a reading with you and Grayston. He's amazing. He is a comedian. Um, and this is the first time he's doing a reading of us together. Yeah, it's the first time with us together. Mm-hmm. He is a comedian. Mm-hmm. Um, and numerous years ago, he really started to tap in to these clairvoyant psychic medium gifts that he possesses. Um, check out those past episodes if you haven't. But this episode that you are about to listen to, our time with Thomas, was really special for us. It was really special. Um, and in fact, there was, I mean, <sighs> There's a lot of moments in this that are like extremely personal and get yeah. really emotional. There was one moment, in fact, um, that I just <clears throat> want to share with the audience that we did have to take out because it did involve certain privacy issues or yeah. whatever. But it was like something that we both needed to hear yeah. so deeply and we were bawling. Yes. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, listen, I, I think, it, <clears throat> I think he said it best, which is like, I'm not here to convince you of something. I'm not here to like do a magic trick on you and make you then believe in what he does. He goes, this is what I do. And if you're in, you're in. And if you're not, you don't have to do this. And I'll be honest with you. The first time I met him, like I definitely, it wasn't anti, but I was just kind of like, you know what? I am not someone who's super well versed in a lot of things <laughs> like i don't know how to, i don't know how else to put it you know what i mean like it's like even just spirituality just a lot of things yeah. like that i'm just someone who like has always been felt a little on the outside yeah and so i just came into this like i did last time like with just an open mind yeah i'm not looking for anything just open mind and if something happens cool and if nothing happens cool and I think because of that, I was able to really get a lot out of this. Mm-hmm. And I was surprised by how much I was able to get out of this. And yeah. I think this is the first time we've had him in studio before. Uh, years ago, he was on Zoom. So that's yeah. also another thing. Being in someone's presence while this is happening is huge. Yeah. Um, I don't know. For me, I, you know, I think another reason why I'm like tired this morning is because of the emotional journey I went on yesterday. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a special thing. And I, and I just encourage you as you watch it to just be with us yeah, and take moments and listen and just, I don't know. I feel like it's like a family bonding moment. Yeah. And thanks if you are listening or watching, thanks for uh, letting us have this moment with the family and uh, dive into some more personal things. Yeah. So we love you all. We love Thomas and uh, let's get into this. And at the very end, we'll uh, hop back on and do a call home. Sounds great. Let's do it. Okay. And we are here officially in studio. The the OGs know for the very first time in person yes. with Thomas yes. Dale. Yes. Wow. I'm so happy. In the flesh. What a time period. The, th- the past three years. What a journey. I mean, like the three of us have been yeah. through. No, you literally walked <laughs> through the door and we like all embraced and it just felt like, oh my oh, God, yes. it feels like family yes. right away. I'm really like, I, we felt you on the Zoom. You like helped us so much with yes. your readings and now it's like together and you guys were with me like like building this whole experience with me like you know Mm. that you know i really started doing this full time in the beginning of the pandemic and like so you guys had you had you had two different podcasts you had your podcast you had your podcast now you have this podcast i've been you know growing and learning and journeying through this whole thing you know switching from comedy to clairvoyance to you know helping and healing and even healing myself and going all of us it's just been so crazy and then to be here in person like even when i did your podcast yeah the boys one i was in that was when i had driving across country and i was yeah. in wilmington north carolina yes, yeah yes, looking yes, for yes. a place in Asheville. so yeah. like we've been on the road with you like <laughs> yes. it's like we've the three of us have just been on such a journey uh, such a journey it literally felt like yeah it felt like family there was something just like a deep connection right yes. away where it's finally in person 
person and now was, you're you're in California. You're now back, I'm back with in us. California, exactly. Yes. Okay. And I remember when you reached out, you were like, Do my eyes deceive me? I love it. I was like, Yes. <laughs> I was just like, I remember, I think it was at the Hollywood Improv and I was yeah. gonna, uh, gonna be going to a comedy show. Mm-hmm. And the day before, I was just looking at the lineup and I see Thomas yes, Dale. And yes. I'm like, Excuse She's me? Back. <laughs> She's, She's back. Back. Yeah. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so for everyone who is listening for the very first, time mm-hmm. little bio yes. about you so um i start i was a stand well i am i'm a stand-up comic who yeah. always had these clairvoyant abilities to like read energy to unveil people's truth then i started doing readings i was doing comedy for 12 years working all over town traveling all over the country being a comedian yeah. and i just wanted to like heal i didn't want you know comedy is so like frantic and this and that and like crazy energy and mental health and all that. And I just wanted to heal. I Mm. wanted to like find my purpose, you know, more. I love making people laugh, but I knew I had other gifts. So um, right before pandemic, like a year before pandemic, I started doing readings for people. Yes. And, you know, I started reading energy. I would like get psychic visions and I would work with people. Like I had three or four People would come to my place and we would do readings. In those readings, people their past loved ones started coming. And I was like, wait, what is this? Yeah. I could talk to people who passed away. Like, so that started happening. So um, then the pandemic happened and I started offering it virtually. And then I didn't, I was like, you know what? I'm going to give comedy a break for now. I want to heal holistically. I want to come off any pharmaceuticals that I've been on. Mm -hmm. I want to just be pure of, of, of spirit. Okay. I don't want to talk about, you know, anxiety and stress and all that stuff. I want to be like peaceful and happy. So, um, I offered it virtually and then I came on your show. And I did a couple of other friends' podcasts, but the chatty broads, those girls came <laughs> yes. for me. I mean, they were like, oh my we God. The broad squad is the best. The broad squad is the yes. best. I loved it. And I'd, what a connection I had with them. And I just yeah. felt like I love doing this. I love helping people. I love guiding people. I love inspiring people because in these sessions, I can see your soul, I can see your truth. Thus, my dog's name, Truth. Mm. I can like unveil these things just through conversation with people. I can like pick these things up. You know, when I'm talking to people, certain things feel certain ways for me. You know, because as humans, we're like, we have like a shield around us to protect us, our own like psyche. So we're not able to see some of the things in us that we need to see in order to grow Mm. or in order to get past certain blockages, Mm -hmm. you know, or we have childhood traumas or things that we've gone through. So I'm able to see these things and and give, you know, and, and spirit guides me through these sessions. So I also get visions. So when I'm talking to someone, I'll just get like a vision or like a metaphor or something that comes up. So I would, you know, suggest it to them. In sessions, I always say, you, it's your life, you have free will. These are just, I would say, advices from spirit. And yeah. then my Hayoka empath thing, where I can feel your energy. So, I mean, what a delightful journey it was, like going on it with these girls that would come. And um, the amount of messages that I got, by the way, over the years with oh, people then I, who have had a session with you and slid into my DMs and been like, I had the most incredible session with Thomas. Oh, it led me to this. It helped this. It helped me process yes, this. That I love that so much. It made it was so joyous. And in fact, I sent one of my best friends to mm-hmm. you as like for a birthday gift. I sent her to you, uh-huh. and um, I didn't tell you that she was coming because I was like you know let it be organic and um I'll never forget she she had an incredible session with you but what was so wild is because you are booked and busy Uh and so the people (laughs) who see you you know she had to wait a hot minute before she saw you and but she she booked her session and something had to get uh rearranged and she texted me the day that you guys were about to have your session and she said Jess you'll never believe it and it was the anniversary of something really big. Mm-hmm. Do you yes. feel like that happens a lot for you where like the aligning of people mm-hmm. who come to you, like the timing ends up? Absolutely. And I'll say that too, like if something comes up, like even like with booking, like, um, cause now it's like, you know, like a, a couple of months in advance. So yeah. I'll say, because we booked in advance, you get unlimited reschedules. So you can reschedule because if it's just, you know, maybe that day you're off, you're not feeling it, you're right. feeling anxious or whatever, you could reschedule. Don't worry about it. Like yeah. we'll just find another day. So it always aligns when it should happen. 
And I always tell people that too. I go, when you come into a session, don't have like an expectation of like, I want to talk to this person or I want to unveil this or I want to get um, an answer about my job or I'm like, just let it be what it's supposed to be because everyone's session is, you know, like it's unique to their own. Right. I have learned as humans though, we do have a lot of things in common as well. Yes. So, you know, there'll be like the things that are very common that, oh, okay, you know, we're all worried. Uh, am I going to move? Is this going to happen? You know, like you're thinking the same things, mm. but then it's those mo those nuggets, those golden mu nuggets that are so specific to like your life or your journey. They give me the goosebumps. I get the chills or like, you know, when there's someone who's coming through as a spirit and giving me this information, like the really specific things, like I get like, cause I'm still learning the process as well too. Yeah. So for me, it's just as exciting. Right, you know? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, with um, with Evan, mm -hmm. I remember when you did the Bros podcast, yep. um, his grandfather had a message for your mom. Yeah. And you shared that with your mom and that was like- Yeah, did that validate for you oh, afterwards? A hundred percent. And it was- it was intense for her and when i he remember gave her that message wow. yeah and i remember that was super intense and she needed it that's what was weird exactly you know it was one thing to be like here's an interesting fact mm -hmm. but the fact that it was she was in a real tough place mm -hmm. with his passing mm -hmm. and then there was a lot of complicated relationship stuff they went through mm -hmm. that there was some closure because of that which was Oh, yeah. Shocking. Well, that's what, yeah. And that's what I've learned too. Like a lot of times, like I'll say in the session, like this might sound vague or it might sound general yeah. or it might sound unimportant. I said, but what I've learned doing this is that spirit is always telling me things for a certain reason. Mm. They're always, you know, so I've learned to like not filter because sometimes I'll be like, oh, that doesn't sound too important or that doesn't sound like exciting or pop. It yeah. sounds vague or general, but there's a reason why the person's getting that message mm. or there's a reason why spirit's asking me to deliver it. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'll say it and I say, if it doesn't make sense to you now, it might make sense to you later. There's even times that I'll get a message for someone in the family and I'll say, you know what? I don't even think this person needs to hear this. Mm. Keep this for you. And then maybe down the line, you might feel that the person is ready to hear that or you're ready to tell them. And then you can do that then as well. Okay. You know, I've even like, to, what's been exciting is like, I didn't know I can do this, but like a lot, like 95% of the times I'll feel someone's astrological sign or they'll show me a picture of somebody and I'll feel their sign. Or we're talking about like the boyfriend and I'm getting, I'm like, I'm just getting this earth energy and he's like a Capricorn. And I'm just like, I'll okay. feel their energy, the energy of their sign. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like, or I'll write it down and I'll be like, you know, Virgo and, and it'd be like, I'm feeling a Virgo and it's the person that I'm reading. Like, it's like, wow. Mm. So that's been really cool. Um, sometimes I'll hear their thoughts that they one time I thought this girl said it out loud and I answered her and she's like, how did you know that? I didn't say, I just thought it, I didn't say it. And it made me realize that I've been doing that like in my life, like, and, if, and in my friend group, like I would just say, say things and, and reply to them and they would say, you're, you're crazy. That's not true. I'm not, you know, I'm not, that, I didn't say that. And then they'll say later, you know, like I was thinking that, so I don't know how you, I was saying, I actually heard it. Like you literally I heard literally it. audibly heard it. So I thought you said it. <laughs> or like, oh, you know, so it's like, I never needed the antidepressants. So I yeah. just was hearing that. <laughs> you know? Like. <laughs> okay, family, pop it in quick pause mm -hmm. here. Um, so I just recently had to get a new phone because my old one finally died on me, okay? And in that transfer, I came face to face with how many amazing photos I have on my phone of my kiddo and my family that just sit there that I don't have the patience to upload, that I would love to actually have real tangible copies yeah. of, right? This is where Persnickety Box comes to save the day. Persnickety Box is the most simple way to get photos off of your device without painful uploading. Listen to how easy this is, okay? Simply swipe 30 of your favorite photos into the app and receive real 4x4 Fuji quality prints in an eco-friendly keepsake story box. You can send a box full of photos as a gift with the option to add a photo album or a frame. It is so cool and it is perfect in time for the holidays. Perfect honestly. gift. Yeah. Um, these pictures are so important and so important, but they just sit on my phone. It's wild that the next generation may be the most photographed and simultaneously not have those tangible albums or scrapbooks of pictures to hold one day. Mm -hmm. um, but baby books and scrapbooking can be overwhelming also. The Persnickety Box app is the most simple way to get photos off your phone and organized into a tangible system 
for your kids or family or you. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think about that. I'm like, I need my daughter to be able to have those photo albums one day like we have. And let's be real. There is no guarantee that the computer of tomorrow will be able to read the photos that you take today. That's true. For real, right? So this is an easy way to do that. Download the Persnickety Box app on iOS and Google Play and start swiping today. A new box opens each month. Fill it and close it when you're ready. Gift or ship a box to grandma, add a photo album or a frame and start creating a memory system that works for you. $19.99 a month. Pause or cancel anytime and you can receive 50% off of your first box with code MOMDAD. That's Persnickety Box in your app store and use code MOMDAD for 50% off, everybody, your first box. You can even gift a year of photos this holiday with the Persnickety Box Ultimate Photo Box, which includes a one-year subscription, acrylic frame, and a photo album for $199. Go to persnicketybox.com for more information. Oh my God, okay. Can you, when you uh, are interacting with people on a daily basis, mm -hmm. um, two things. Number one, are there times where you're getting a message mm -hmm. and you're like, I want to give this to this person? Well, it's like for me, like, I think for me, like, stop being an asshole. Like, I just, it's <laughs> yeah, coming yeah, yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it's become like, it's like a thing where I feel the thing. Okay. okay. So it's not um, the only time I get a message is when I actually connect and purposely do it. And, right. And like when you like open the book, when I open it up, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise I would be like out of my mind. Right. Right. So I, what I'll get is feelings okay. or instinctual things. And I will be, I was the friend who was the best advice giver. Because, so everyone was yeah. always coming to of you. Of course, because sure. I would just uh, give this course. like advice or like even in like comedy, it's funny, like I would have friends, I would give them like artistic advice or like advice about like, not the business because I'm really not good at the business side of things, but like advice artistically. Yeah. And they would be like, dude, you should be my manager. That was amazing. Or that was so good. Or right. I tried it and it was like the best. Right. Or like, yeah. Or like sometimes I will give them advice like if they're like, oh, should I go with this manager or that manager or this agent or whatever? Like, and I'll be able to intricately see like the best situation for them. Does that make sense? Yes. And yes. like I explain this, explain it. And then they're like, that totally worked out for me. Interesting. But I can't okay. do it for myself. I was just about to ask <laughs> no. you that. I was like, that's got to be frustrating. It's so frustrating. To where it's like, if I could do what I do to me for other people it would make yes. my life so much easier. Yes. And you <laughs> yeah. know, what's funny is this past three years that I've opened up the portals and I've opened up my senses more. I've had to learn more about like meditation, more about my own chakras, mm. more about like protecting my own energy and my relationship with God and spirit and mm. my spirit guides. It has brought me so much closer to like, we we call it God because it's the light, it's the energy that created us, and we yeah. can call it whatever they want or believe whatever they want. But I've been connecting to this entity and my relationship. One morning I woke up and I felt like the love of God, like washing over me because I was having anxiety and it was like making me feel good, like sh like peaceful and wow. protected. Mm. And this this like learning to trust my instincts more. Mm -hmm. because I would like not be able to, you know, they always say like, follow your gut. I'm like, my gut's been on board with every bad decision I've ever made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so, but that I realized was me not trusting my gut. That was my brain. Cause that's why it, people like, why can't you do this for yourself? It's like, I'm in a human body. Right. I have my nervous system. I have hormones. I have my yeah. brain. I have past situations, childhood stuff, my own traumas, like, it's hard for me to of distinguish. Course. And then I have spirit talking to me on top of the nervous system. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I got a lot going on. Yeah, everybody. there's so a lot too many go filters, like <laughs> yeah. 40 filters so going on. So many filters yeah. going yeah. on, right? And it's like, and all I want to do is be at peace and be happy and yeah. have fun. <laughs> and like that, you know, like, so I have learned though that my, my spirit guides are always watching and protecting and like guiding for all of us. Mm. We all have spirit guides that are guiding us. And they'll give us, they're the ones that give us those little nudges or they're the ones that give us the instincts or like, the, you know, they'll point you in the right direction or you'll hear a sound or a song mm. or like, you know, um, something will happen and it'll make you turn down a different block. They're the ones that they're, it's interesting. They're really, they're not creating the situation. They're using your brain like a remote control car because it's energy and they're just guiding your, helping you guide with your thoughts. Interesting. Mm. So I've learned like with this work, the more at peace I am and the more calm I am, the better I am connecting.
Okay. You know? Yeah. And that that's makes sense. so important. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then like when you see people out and about, you just, you get a feeling and then it's just your body. Then you're kind of like, well, when I have I'm to at, stay yeah, at peace. I have to, so, or just, yeah. Like when I'm out and about, I'm with my dog. Yeah. I'm concerned about him. Is he having fun? I just want to make sure he's having a good time. And also it's like when you come home from work, you're just, I don't, I just want to, you know, I take it off. I don't want to feel your energy, (laughs) you know, or like, you know, or like, I don't want to know to be honest. Like sometimes I don't want to know the truth because that's the thing too. Knowing that like human beings are a vast, like there's a lot going on there. Yeah. Ignorance is bliss. Yes. Right. You're like, I don't need to see inside. I don't want to know. You know what? I don't want to know what you're thinking. Dear yeah. Lord. <laughs> is there a way to block it? Like if you smoke something, well, I'm think, just wondering, yes. like, is there a way to be like, Oh God, it's not turning off. I'm at this like dinner party and I'm just getting overwhelmed. Is there a way to turn it off so that you can just enjoy the dinner party? Well, I have learned that it's funny. Cause now again, like since I've opened this up the past three years, yeah. I've realized like, I look at my life and I'm like, oh, that's why I'm very selective with my friends. Mm. It's not because sure. I'm picky or I'm like snobby about, I'm like, just like, I have to be careful with who I'm friends with right. because if they're liars, if they're this or they're that, or they're up to no good, it freaking gets in my soul. Yes. And my thing is, I always want to see the best in people. I only want to see the good. So I push that stuff aside and I let them, I let myself get Suck agitated or anxiety or energy. Yeah. And I realized through my life, I learned just subconsciously to be choosy about who I spend my time with. Mm. So there's that. And then I realized, oh, so it's not like a snobby behavior. It's like protecting myself. Mm -hmm. Um, Not going to every party that I'm invited to. Again, not because I'm like tired or lazy. It's because it's overwhelming. Yeah. Also being a big personality, like in parties and social, I think like my high energy helps me like, yeah, it helps me like, um, keep away maybe from all that. Like when I'm quiet and calmer, maybe I'm feeling more. Uh, okay. So I was like, oh, I th- used to think I was manic or like yeah. ADHD, which I might be a little ADHD. So there could be, again, the human stuff that's going on. Right. But I think like, yeah, I think like the talkative person maybe happened a lot because I didn't want to feel everything. Sure. That if you get in first, you can kind of create the barrier as opposed to if you're just looking around and, and feeling adjusting. all the shit. Yes. And yeah. ingesting and not being able to say, all the, I remember one of my friends said once too, he was like, you know, Thomas, who, do you think that people want the guy around who is unveiling their truth? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will and say, I, like, I, want, I love like friends. <laughs> I want to, well, I will say, it's just like, you're so nice, mm-hmm. so warm. Thank you. And All a tall this. drink of water in person too. Yes. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> you were so Seriously, tall. <laughs> you came Good in. Looking. I was like, oh my right? god! You got it all going on. But I will oh. say, just sitting for a second, I felt mm-hmm. a little bit of just like, as someone who isn't nearly as comfortable with all these things. Mm-hmm being opened up mm-hmm. took me I'm, I'm new to even therapy all these mm-hmm. things and it's I been, already know I feel that from yeah you, yes. it's been beautiful and traumatic mm-hmm. <laughs> and and because of it I like I just I immediately had to kind of check myself from being from thinking about like what is he you know, what is he thinking what right. is he sensing I know, I instead that. of like oh I'm so happy to be you know what I mean yeah. like it took me it, oh, like, I know. and I wanted you here of course but I still was like fighting that yeah. Whoa, I know. You know what I mean? And because I'm someone who's like, I'm like a mother, I yeah. like to make people feel comfortable. So when I feel that from, like, I've already felt nurturing. that from you. And I was like, so now I know, like, okay, don't bombard him with information right away. Or don't like, and so now here I am talking and thinking that about Evan. Like, yeah. because I want everyone comfortable. I'm the person, I don't like making people uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's funny too, because like as a comic, you make people uncomfortable. So on stage, I don't mind because it's jokes. It's crazy. We're funny. Yeah. So it's okay to be uncomfortable. But like with this stuff, it's so real. I'm a mother. Mm-hmm. I want to comfort you. I want you to feel good. I want you to leave feeling inspired and happy. I also tell people like, I'm not going to tell you anything that's going to make you uncomfortable. Sure. Because I am very, like my moon's in Pisces. So as a Pisces moon, I'm very like just caring and nurturing Mm -hmm. and loving and sensitive. So if I ever made you feel bad, I would think about it like yeah. all night long. Your, so moon's, learned, your moon's in Pisces too. Is it? That's, Aww, a word to, to that's beautiful. In the it's, that's it's, why he's <laughs> feeling it. <laughs> yeah. And if I'm just being super transparent here, yes. it's weird because we sat down and Jess knows this. I'm just... I'm not a huge crier. Mm-hmm. Never. You're, you're like tearing up right now. Well, it's weird. Mm-hmm. You sat down and I'm sitting here and I've been like 
trying not to kind of tear and i'm like what the i felt that when i came in the apartment house too yeah Yeah. something happened there too i felt the little emotions it's super weirding me out because i'm not like oh mr crier guy and i'm just like it's just i'm like i've never seen a lot going on here in this room and it's like uh, you guys know me like i'm not just like drop of a hat cry i'm like it Mm takes like my daughter the other day was like how come you don't cry that much i'm like okay (laughs) yeah it's like but it's one of those things that like at first i'm like okay this is a mm-hmm. lot you know like but then i'm also like i crave it yeah so it's like that thing of course, you know we're humans crave it so anyway i don't and, even know yeah. why i said all that but i just felt like yeah. i needed to kind of like i needed to tell myself to cross the barrier you know yeah. what i mean and it's okay yeah. like at, i will help you across that barrier yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying like because i'm a genuine person and you can maybe feel that yeah so that's why you feel comfortable with opening up like that yeah but i already felt that coming from you and I'm a gentle, gentle giant, you know? Sure. Like, I mean, we, yeah. we've done this even before and it was yeah. incredible. So, mm-hmm. so let's do some things. Okay. Like, yeah, should we dive yeah. in? I'm like, with that, with yeah. that being said. Let's do some stuff. So let's, you know, to explain to the listeners, what yeah, we're going to do is we're going to organically, I don't like to call myself one thing or another. I'm a clairvoyant psychic medium, but I don't like to label it. Like it's going to be, you know, like right. come to me for like the, the, the dead people. Or the, I like to see what comes out, who comes up, what I'm feeling from you, if we're unveiling truths, right. if we're just giving psychic, if we're getting past loved ones, I like it to naturally happen. Okay. Okay, so we'll see what happens. Let me just wipe my eye. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna, um, <clears throat> this is my little notepad. Yeah. So I'm gonna be getting feelings, words, and images. And since there's two of you, like one thing might connect with one or the other, you let me know when something connects. Okay. Okay. Um, if it doesn't connect, we don't get stuck. We just keep moving. It might make sense in the session or it might not. Right. But, you know, when things connect, but just be open. Don't worry. You know, you're in good hands. Yes. Okay. So we're going to do two deep breaths together. Okay. We're going to go in through the nose and out through the mouth. Okay. Also, remember to have fun. Yeah. That's the main thing. Mm-hmm. This is fun. Yes. We're, you know, this is a gift. Exa- yeah, it's a gift yeah. from spirit yeah. and from heaven and from you know the world. So mm. this is, you know, we're here to have fun. That's the main thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to go in through the nose, out through the mouth twice. And I'll let you know when. So we do it together. Okay. Okay. okay? okay. All right. So right now what I'm doing is... I'm just grounding myself first, thinking of Jess and Evan. Okay. So the first breath now. Great. Second breath now. And let's just do one more because we have this extra intense energy and excitement. So ready? Third one now. Good. Okay. Okay, spirit world, we are here for love and light only and to help Jess and Evan with their highest good. Let's see what we have. So now I'm just going to take a look and see what we got going on here. It's so funny because they're doing it to me again, too. When I was driving here, it felt like, Jess, there was like a woman that was like poking at my shoulder. (laughs) And she kept going like this. Any family member that like, it feels like, (laughs) it feels like a grandmother, but it feels like an older woman. But she does this a lot. (laughs) Do you know what that is? <laughs> and she again, she just did it now to me too. Stop it. Yeah, she goes like this. She's like poking and, and yeah. What is that? Oh my gosh, Thomas, you just literally made my heart fill up oh so much. God. I was really hoping. I was really hoping. It's it's my nana. And she does, do you know this? Like she, she just is like the <laughs> poker. <Yeah>. Like literally <laughs> as soon I mean, Evan has known her since my goodness, yeah, he was twenty years. Yeah, since you were like 12 years old and she was almost like a grandmother to him, honestly. And this woman, He's she was like the guy. gentlest soul, but she had that finger out and <laughs> yes. she pointed everything and poked you in ev- the chest. Everything's this. <laughs> yes. Oh my poking. God. So thank you. Thank you. This because, is always this. Yes. And we literally, we like, the joke was, it was just like, Nana, you don't have to just, it's it's okay. You don't have to point. You don't yeah. have to point at me. It's always just <laughs> yes. the finger wagging yes. and the poking. Yes. And, and that's how she comes through. Because listen, we all have grandmothers that are past, right? Yeah, of but course. this, she's validated no, that, that it's is, her. That is, 
the most like my Nana. That is so Claire. Specific. Yes, she is a yes. poker. And she was doing it when I was driving. I was like, whoever wants to come through. And she kept poking yeah. at me. And I'm like, oh my God, who's poking no. at me? And so then just now I was like, because I, tr- I don't like to ever like preempt things before I come. So I was like, all right, just let it be clear. Yes. And then she did it again with the poking. No, it's literally, and my mom does it. And yes. then Evan now gives no, me a hard time. If we do an impression of them, it's like this. Oh my God, yes. And then Evan and now has been giving me a hard time recently because he's like, you're pointing. You're pointing like your oh Nana and gosh. like your mom. And so like, she's oh. like, you got to stop, you know. <laughs> yes, okay. Well, Nana is <laughs> very <laughs> here and she's poking me. <laughs> oh my she's God. poking me. Okay. And she shows me celebration symbols as well. Yeah. So usually that means like there's like a situ- like what month are we in? So October, November, or December. Celebration. It could be birthday. It could be like yeah, like birthday probably like celebration. It was just my daughter's birthday a couple of days. ago. A couple of days yeah. ago. Thank you. So yeah. that's that's she's validating the birthday that she was here for. She saw it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. She said I had my lipstick on. Like she was like, <laughs> you know, she was like ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Her lipstick, it was always out. Yeah, I love you, of. Nana. It was always <laughs> that's what she's showing me. This lipstick. She's like, I got my lipstick on. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Also, Evan, there was something about your dad popping up for me, and let's see what's going on with dad. I'm assuming he's alive. Yeah. But there's someone trying to talk to him about it's his father. Is his father passed? Yeah, a long time ago. Okay, because his father's coming through. Evan's dad's dad. Hold on. What is he saying about? It feels like dad's just got some like stress that he's dealing with. Mm -hmm. And they're showing me just like, he's saying like, calm down. Like there's something going on that he's saying, calm down. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. And it feels like it has something. There's like something that's your grandfather and your dad. There's like a similarity about them and something Mm. that's like, um, Heart. The same, yeah. And mm. he's showing is, heart, is heart. because he, I don't like to say anything health wise because I'm not sure. a doctor. Sure. Yeah. But he was showing me that the yeah. heart area, and he was saying calm down. So I go with calm down. That's interesting. I mean, my dad has that's been a focus the past mm-hmm. like a year or two. Okay, thank is you. like bringing stress down. Thank you. So and that's what he's. And the concern is the heart because dad. Yeah, my my grandfather passed away early. Young. He was like fifty nine yeah. or sixty, mm-hmm. and he died from like a sudden heart failure yes and so my dad has been like taking a lot of precautions lately and trying to figure out how to you know deal with and that they were showing me the heart but i don't like to scare people because i'm not a doctor so i'm not like oh get your heart checked and then the fucking weekend's ruined you know right 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 so so that's why but then so i said show me something else besides the heart and he said calm down calm Calm down down. so the stress yeah yeah. i mean it's interesting you said that it's an energy then thing more than even well it's probably an advice on how to you said yourself that the past year dad's been like working on working on stress for his heart so grandpa's saying just calm down and stop stressing and it will help. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, even my dad told me the other day, I need to calm down. So mm-hmm. And the similarity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the same thing. Yeah. So it's grandpa and dad having that same situation Interesting. there. Interesting. Mm-hmm. He also says water under the bridge. So there might be a situation there that he's saying, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, he's saying water under the bridge. It's okay. Let it go. No hard feelings. Yeah. They, I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't think their relationship was, I think there was a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Well, you grandpa's know, like, a ton oh, of stuff. Yeah. So. He's like, no hard feelings. Let it go. Dad might hold on to it. Yeah. And that's part of his like things. If he can let it go, oh. he can, you know, a lot of times we have stress for things that we don't even realize like we're yeah. holding on to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, there was a whole bunch of stuff that went down mm-hmm. kind of in his, I think, 30s, 30s. Mm-hmm. And then I don't think there was much repair there so between dad and yeah, his father exactly yeah. and then he passed early so so your dad might still hold on to some stuff oh, i'm sure so yeah. grandpa says it's okay go, water okay. under the bridge mm-hmm. and then jess who's the sagittarius on your side um so sagittarius is november or december yeah okay so my so my daughter mm-hmm. is a scorpio sag mm-hmm. cusp mm-hmm. um but i also have an aunt who's okay. a sagittarius would she be connected to to nana or is this da- is this dad's side no she'd be connected to yeah, my nana because nana yeah. is the one saying mention the sagittarius so that's okay. her daughter that's so that's her, her son's, son's hu- wife wife okay um but they definitely especially in like the last years um got close okay so let's see what she's saying about her. So she's saying for her to dance again 
and to like, yeah, like let loose again. She might be, she, maybe she had just gone through something mm. or they're going through something where she's not free. She's saying, dance again, be happy. Yeah. Okay. She, Nana sees this. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, my, my aunt is, mm-hmm. was a like, like party, fun, mm-hmm. rock and roll badass. And my uncle it was super fun. And there's just been life stress, mm-hmm. work. And then honestly, the loss of my Nana has been really hard for my aunt and Aww. she's really struggled um well her, yeah. a lot yeah. yeah nana saying dance again mm. interesting okay because it does so feel Lori. like yeah. that's so, so Lori Lori too. it feels like she's yeah like she's a little depressed or sad she's been struggling mm-hmm. and that was just yeah Lori. it was the she's the Lori needs a good party yeah she's that's the what she party. is the party, she is like, the party. Like, like yeah her yeah my aunt, yeah, yeah she is the party and she's been it's been um rough so Mm. And Evan, some I feel like I to tell you, hold on, that you are enough. You are enough. Okay. Meaning like you're enough. You're you're an amazing husband, father. Um you are are you married or not? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. assume. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> I'm um, like, I've been waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So should they say you are enough. This is a struggle. This is something, and this is coming from grandpa as well. So I think there's something with the generational men in your family. Mm-hmm. And they're saying, <laughs> you are enough. I don't think you got it. Like, I don't think he has let you know. Or you're always trying to strive or like to be enough for him. And grandpa says, you are enough. Also a grandma. So this woman, hold on. This woman, she's sweet to you. Is this dad's mom? Yeah. Or, yeah, she's sweet yeah. to you. Yeah, she was. She calls you her baby. Mm. She says you were very cute when you were a baby. Like, I don't know if you had chunky cheeks. <laughs> oh, or yeah. just like, yeah. That bowl cut. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> says he was so cute. Chunky, little chunky mm. baby. He was. Mm. Chunky. Yeah. Okay. Mm. You are enough and you have to let that go. Because it's actually what holds you back. You second guess yourself. Man. Yeah, I mean, it's weird you bring this up because I have been meeting with, I call him my guru. Mm -hmm. He's like a therapist slash, I don't even know what he is, but he's just incredible and he's changed my life. Mm -hmm. But the number one thing we work with is that. Mm -hmm. And like, um, it's one of those weird things. Like when I was young, it wasn't as much of a thing, but definitely growing up and all Mm -hmm. these things, it's like, the me being enough thing. Mm-hmm. I, I was never really s- secure enough to like admit that as mm-hmm. like a thing, yep. you know? And then through the work, realizing just how much of my life choices, how much I move mm-hmm. is a, is about not being enough. Wow. And how like, that is like literally the theme of my th- therapy wow. it's just like how do i figure this shit out well, you know what i mean how, okay stop second guessing yourself so the reason you're when you second guess yourself it's putting more insecurity and more doubt so if again free will you don't have to listen to this but if you would like to get to the root of this stop second guessing give yourself some faith even if you're if you don't feel like oh i don't know if this is the right thing or i don't know if i can do this or just go for go do it mm. Obviously, nothing dangerous, you know? Oh, yeah. But, yeah. like, do it. Just, like, go for it. And you're going to build, you're going to see the results that you are good enough mm-hmm. and that you can do it. It's the second guessing that's the root of this problem. It's weird you say that, too, because it's a newer problem mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. like in the past five, six years. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like I used to never second guess myself. Right. You used, used to go after it. Mm-hmm. In the past, like, five or six years, like, I don't like, I don't know. It's just been like really tough. Like the second guessing has gone up to mm-hmm. like the, like, am I enough mm-hmm. shit has like really hit the fan. It's been a really, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's been yeah. a history of kind of my, I grew up religious and mm-hmm. kind of left all that behind. And then in the wake of that was mm-hmm. a lot of holes I was not expecting. Mm-hmm. And am I enough? The yeah. second, you know, that kind of was, there was some of that left over. Mm-hmm. So, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the encouragement of just stop second guessing is huge. But also, when you're in meditation or if you're, when you're digging, go back to that person you were six years ago. Remember that person. Remember how that person acted or made decisions and try to like emulate that person. 
or, or copy that person. That okay. could be something that, that could be an exercise for you. Yeah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, mm -hmm. so just take that with you. Yeah, when yeah, yeah. We're not signing contracts now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always say take it with you. Yeah. Let it to make it yeah. make sense on a mountain somewhere. Okay, family, quick pause. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Listen, we are getting into some emotional stuff today. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. We've been getting into it. And that's very much this time of year in general. It can bring up positive things, but it can also bring up a lot of tough emotions and personal challenges from the chaos, family, all of that. Um, I know personally around this time of year, I up my therapy sessions. This time of year can be a lot and it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all of the stress and change, something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded and give you the tools to manage everything going on. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Yeah, you all know how much therapy has benefited Jess and mm -hmm. I separately as a couple, as parents, and we couldn't recommend therapy more. Uh, personally, it's helped me a lot with processing some past traumas, learning better coping skills and learning how to love and accept myself more. Uh, BetterHelp is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched uh, with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge at all. This time of year can get really busy and schedules can get full, but it is so important to make sure that you take care of you, which is why I love how BetterHelp is designed to be suited around your schedule. It makes it so much easier to make sure you get that therapy session in. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MomDad today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MomDad. BetterHelp dot com slash MomDad. Okay. And here's the thing, too, if I can get very personal with you yeah, both. please. Okay. You're both going through life changes right now. And that could be the thing. You have a beautiful relationship, but... There's something going on in between your relationship. There's nothing wrong with your relationship. It's the both of you. It's your individual shit that you're going through. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's like we, we are always like connected, mm -hmm. but it has been, it's been bumpy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the past, the past couple. Of, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say. The past couple of co months. Past couple a of year, months. Yeah. yeah. And it's always like, we are always good. Yes. But then, like, there's stuff around that's yes, just been it's very hard. Recent. Yeah, and then that can be challenging mm -hmm. on the relationship, too, exactly. right? Because you're just like, oh, my gosh, I'm trying to just, like, you know, not sink. Right. But just know it's your own individual thing. So it's for you, it's that whole, like, not enough thing. And, Jess, I was feeling some stuff, but I want to make, make sure of it first before I say it. Yeah. What exactly it is. It's the whole, like trying to do too many things at once and then not succeeding at them all the time mm -hmm. and then feeling like you're failing. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they're saying if you could try to lighten the load a little bit and focus, <laughs> does that make sense? Are you doing like you have a fucking microphone in our house? What is going on right now? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's like, it's what? literally like what we were Are talking about. Talking like, about? I need to rearrange a lot of yes. things. I mean, going light on. in the load mm -hmm. should be a tattoo uh -huh. at this point. Yes, like that's the, what the well, conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, I'm just listening to them. Spirit yeah. is my micro is my microphone in your house. Like yeah. specifically, just lightening mm -hmm. the load. Yes, I guess so. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, I think when we are on this podcast, a lot of times when we're on the podcast, we'll mm -hmm. talk about reality TV, and like when we're here, this is my space, and the mm -hmm. reason I like love the week to week here so mm -hmm. much is that we are like silly silly fun so i guess you know a lot of the listeners probably don't know but when we're not recording there's just been like i said there's just a lot going mm -hmm. on just like you know parenting family mm -hmm. life just like just fine like just lots of like finance mm -hmm. stuff yeah. like a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> and so i've been just trying to juggle and see like maybe i can start this and maybe we'll right. do this and this mm -hmm. at the school and da, 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 da. and i'm like and then when one thing doesn't and happen and it's just yeah. crumbling yes, exactly. and then you're like oh i'm not I'm failing at all of these yes, things right, <laughs> instead exactly. of just mm -hmm. minimizing and focusing. So it's, we've been literally talking about like, okay, how do I, they said to focus on pick a thing, 
focus on it because you are very capable of yeah. succeeding at the thing you put your mind to. Yeah. So for you, they're saying you're getting overwhelmed because you're trying to come up with two, just pick one thing. Okay, the parenting thing, you got that going. That's already going. You know yeah. how to do it. It's kind of on auto. Yeah. You have a partner. You have two of you. She's in good hands. You're good, okay? okay. That's going to be something that for the rest of your life you're going to be doing, okay? Yeah. As, at least until 18, 18 years old, right, okay? Right. So pick when it comes to work things, just pick one thing, okay. okay? Pick one thing. And even like with the podcast, like I feel like, Evan, you handle a lot of the techno technical stuff. Right. Like just get and show up and you can be fine. If you want to create something else, pick one project okay. and focus on that. Okay. Okay? Okay. But yes, lighten the load. <laughs> Here, you loud and clear. Yeah. She's got the validation <laughs> you need. Yes, exactly. Yes. You loud yeah. and clear, uh -huh. Captain. She's looking at me like. And by lightening the load, do you mean lounging and shopping? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah no. That's always that's always going to happen. Yeah. But that's not part of the agenda. Okay. Okay. Because we want you to be able to succeed in something, so you don't get this failure feeling. That's the problem. Mm. The failure feeling is causing the stress and that's your stress and then you're not enoughing is your stress and then that's the thing that's coming in between you both. You're not feeling whole as people yes. and you're both evolving and yep. growing yep. and figuring out your own shit. Yep. So it's and then you question is it the relation? It's not ever. Yeah. You guys are soulmates. No, this is my Exactly. That, yeah. <laughs> you guys is, are soulmates. Thank God for him. <laughs> oh <my> yeah. God. <sighs> okay, Jess, your mom. Let's go to mom. Yeah. Mom is very like, I get this torn feeling, like she's very pulled in two different directions, and she's <laughs> she's like torn. Yeah, and she's like going through <laughs> yeah. this like, she's like it's crises. It's like almost crisis. Like yes. she's having like this crisis of being torn and pulled in two different directions. Yes, it feels like a physical decision. Or just like something that she's m m like supposed to choose. My mom is just like a big, she's a big energy. Oh, I love her and so much, she's, but she's mm -hmm. definitely torn. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's, she, it's funny because, you know, I don't even know if there's a specific thing that comes mm -hmm. to mind right. when there's like a specific situation. Okay, right. It's kind of just life. That's how she is in general. It's just kind of like life. Like there's always kind of something. She's not the best. She's not a decision. Like there's like, she doesn't like making decisions. No. And there's always just kind of, there is that duality okay. mm -hmm. with my mom where it's like, there's this part of her that wants to rest, but then there's this other part that just has to give mm -hmm. her the anxiety wants her to be so busy. Mm -hmm. And it's just this battle of, uh, yeah, just the mm -hmm. back and forth. And well, check with her because there's a certain situation that's giving her like stress. A lot like, of not stress. Not stress, like um ang like um tornness. That's just the word I keep feeling. Okay. She's like making this it's like a choice. That's okay. the thing. Okay. Just to choose it's like almost between a person. It could be a friend, it could be there's some kind of choice that I'm getting. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So Interesting. check with her on okay, that. Okay, I will. And I get like this feeling in her, like anxiety in my gut for her. Yeah. Like she deals with an anxiety and she holds a lot of her stress in her stomach. Yeah. I think big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'll just say when I think about your mom, I think about like the my mom. other mom, yeah. you know what I mean? Or like an amazing mother. I love her so mm -hmm. much. Oh, yeah. But the one thing I feel like she's always in tornness mm -hmm. of is like who she is mm -hmm. and who she like wants to be slash like pictures herself to be, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or like has a vision of herself to be and like mm -hmm. how much I'm always in favor of like, just be you mm -hmm. and all so much of that anxiety will go away. Right. Instead of maybe whatever vision of your mind of the person you think you want to be, or you think you should be or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not who you actually are. Yeah. And I'm always feeling like she's intention for that. It's like, she's an amazing person. And mm -hmm. if she just kind of like let a breath go and did her, mm -hmm. she wouldn't have to right. deal with all this kind of like what feels sometimes like duality. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is also like she gives herself to, is she, cause it, it feels like a, a partner, a male. I keep getting this man. Okay. And it's like, you know, like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I keep getting this man. I'm like, no, yeah. honey, it's a person. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, like, well, wow, then I, yeah. I was reaching there. Yeah. You're you're way more right. I didn't want to go there, but yes. you're way more I right like, than, yes, uh, you know. Yes, a and thousand again, percent. I don't tell people what to do, so I would never be like, uh, but I just feel the decision <laughs> she's trying to, like, she's torn. So it's like maybe she gives herself to this person a lot 
or maybe yep. she when she is in a relationship, yes. she just gives herself. So it's torn between. <laughs> so much. Holy shit. It's so torn much. between being just being. She could be with this person, but it's like being be her be give herself too. Yeah, okay. Yes. Give herself the life. Yes. Uh, not just giving. She's a giver. Yes. This, oh my you know? god, she's such a giver. It's literally. That's what it is. It's she's about her. She's just right. such a a, a giver, yes. and what I so deeply want for her is to and, be able to give, but also give to herself. Mm. So that, what they're saying to me is when she can learn to yeah. give to herself and to like think of herself first it's not a selfish thing it's a her, it's just she will have she will find the person that is going to love her because they can't love her if she's not giving her mm. like it's like she's if she can give to herself she's going to find the person that can give to her too does that make sense yeah. okay yeah. Mm. So that's the answer for her. She has okay. to give to herself. She's got to stop choosing. The, choose her. That's what she has to do. That's what I keep. Choose her. Okay. And then that person's going to pop up and it's going to be like easy peasy. I love to hear this mm -hmm. and give this message to her because she's such an amazing person. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted her to be able to like choose herself more. And she and it's like, no, you're not being selfish. You're literally just like. And loving what sign yourself. Is she? She's a Taurus. Oh my God! Yes, that's the Taurus way. <laughs> yeah, the Taurus way. I'm a Taurus also. Okay. And Tauruses yes. are we will it's give, the mama. And give yeah. and the Mother Earth. I'm the Mother Earth. Yeah. Let me make <laughs> your life Earth. comfortable. Yes. Let me make everything come. Let me bend over backwards. And because we're Tauruses and strong like bull. Yep. We can take it on. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, she is so strong. Yeah. She oh is. yeah. No, Tauruses <laughs> can just pile it on, pile it on. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. But she will find that person as soon as she can figure out how to choose herself first. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So do more genuine for yourself and that person's going to, you're going to get that match. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Mm. Oh. All right, let's keep going. Love you, mama. Mm -hmm. She deserves it. Yep. She does. She does. Now, I always say something like when I know this from Earth, but I remember it or like a last session. Yeah. I remember your dog last time. We talked about your dog the yeah. last time. So Yeah, I'm, right. big one. Yeah, so yeah. he just came into my head, the dog, like I was thinking about him. And I was like, is he around here? And if this makes sense to you, then that does make sense. But I'm getting like, did he have like a big bark? And like in your face almost sometimes, like because he like did it in my face. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> like, I mean, it was thunder. <laughs> yes. And he said, show you that bark in the ear, in the face. Like no like, no like personal space with the bark. No, he was always in your face. Yes. Just wanted to kiss and hug. And, and that's bark, what he's showing yeah. me. He goes, show him in, be in his face and then my loud bark. Mm. In that loud bark in his, in your face in your would face. be when he was really happy. Like yeah. it was like, like it was like, I want to play. Like we're right here. And that's what he's doing to mm. me specifically. The loud bark in my face. So that means since you said that's when he was happy, he's uh -huh. trying to tell you he's happy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, your baby. I heard yeah. that bark. Yeah, it was, and it was in my face specifically. I was like, "You, had, mm. you don't know any space." Any space? <laughs> no, and the, and the bark no, is like so loud no. in my face. He would in my just face. shove yes. himself right in your face. <laughs> yes, he'd be as close to you as humanly possible. Yes, and he's rolling over too. No, yeah. <laughs> my dog never rolls over, so that's interesting to see. Yeah, he'd always over. go on his back, and he was yes. two hundred and twenty pounds, and he was just right. like, you know, so he's rolling. Yeah, over. he's doing yeah, that yeah, now. He's yeah. rolling over, and he would do that in here all the time. Oh, he did that in here. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's why I'm like all of a sudden thinking about him because I'm feeling yeah. that energy and he's like rolling over right here. He literally uh. right here would just, we'd be podcasting and he just like would, sl his body. Yes. His, I'd be working side. too and he'd always just kind of right here and it just roll oh, over. Yep. Yeah. The rollover is what Interesting. he's showing me. Wow. Yep. He's showing me that specifically. Okay. Oh, <sighs> big dude. Hmm. Love you, B. But he's up there and hanging out and having fun. <laughs> <laughs> like fun, fun, fun. <laughs> and he almost makes me feel they don't speak you know english the animals but they make he makes me feel i love it here like this is fun this mm. is easy i get to be with you more that's mm. what he says okay mm. This is vague, but there might be something with the oil change or something with the car that, that just came up. I don't know if you had to change something or if something had to get fixed, but or did or 
if if it's not specifically you that happened, is there somebody that you know, alive or past, that's specific that does mechanics or like does working on the car? Uh, well, I mean, our car just got fixed. It got in a small accident. So when, was, how long ago was this? Two weeks ago. Okay, because <laughs> yeah, like they're showing me something being fixed on the car. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we just had the the whole bumper redid because okay. someone rear-ended us. <laughs> so then that's just a validation from Spirit that they're around because they showed me the car being fixed. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My grandpa was a mechanic in the army. I don't know if that means anything. Okay. But. Well, that actually would make more sense to me then because it, and the grandpa's passed. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, yeah. So if he was a mechanic and that, because that's, they were showing me being fixing cars. Okay. 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 So that would There's make more that. sense. Than okay. Because yeah. this is how this works. Like I have to interpret it. Right. So I'm no, like, sure. is it their car? And then I'm like, no, it's, it's a mechanic possibly. Yeah. So yes, that would make yeah. more sense. Okay. So is this the grandfather that already came up or a different grandfather? Different. My yes. okay. mother's grandfather. So that makes sense. So he's mother's entering. Yeah. Oh, Here okay. comes the mechanic. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. okay. So mechanic in the army makes sense. So okay. this is mom's dad now. Yeah. Got it. So that's the mechanic. Perfect. Oh. He's a little feisty in a sense. Like he's very, like very like, I don't, it's not strict. It's feisty. It's, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh-huh. Like, it's very like, I kind of dig it. I like him. <laughs> like, I kind of yeah. like it. It's like, he'll tell you, he'll read you. He will tell you straight up. He's like, gritty. Gritty, yes. Yes, yes, old yes school gritty. School dude, you know yeah. what I mean? And I dig that, yes. <laughs> I appreciate it because he's so real, yeah. you know? Yes. And holds no shit and gives the best advice. He has like w- these one liners that I'm getting. <laughs> he gives these very like pearls of wisdom. Mm. Okay. He's a little hard on you in a sense, Evan. Like he says to like, um, like pull it up, pull it together. Like something like mm. he's like, pull it together. Like he doesn't really like, he's not, he's not soft. <laughs> no. <laughs> no <it's> not. <laughs> soft. No, he's like, ne- very like negative soft. He's like, what whatever. you need is to just pull it together and just yeah. keep moving forward. Mm. Well, we are talking about some uh, some heavy heavy things mm-hmm. right now, yes. So this is going to be quite a quite a quick left turn here as we take this pause. But um, if you've been around for a time, you know how I feel about jingle balls <laughs> on my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> jingle balls on the eyes. And if yours are out here <laughs> looking for a trim or a shave, well, do I have the perfect gift for you, okay? It is Manscaped, baby, and all of Santa's helpers have been working hard to bring you or yours Manscaped's brand new performance package 5.0 Ultra, featuring the new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Ball Trimmer, the perfect mix of naughty and nice. Go to manscaped.com and use code MOMDAD for 20% off plus free shipping. Get like Santa and slay the holidays this year with Manscaped. I mean, Evan, you have been using Manscaped practically daily for years. Absolutely. At this point. Yeah. I am a big Manscaped endorser. Yes, you are. Um, Manscaped and their products has been a part of my daily routine for years. Mm-hmm. I can confidently say the Manscaped Performance Package 5.0 Ultra makes an amazing gift as well. Mm-hmm. In- included in the special sack mm-hmm. is the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Trimmer, Manscaped's Liquid formulations and two free gifts um starting with santa's number one helper we have the lawn mower 5.0 ultra this fifth generation trimmer features two next gen blade heads the lawn mower 5.0 ultra body trimmer and the weed whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect it all plus both are waterproof so there's no issue clearing the snow out of his driveway Mm -hmm. also let's talk about the crop soother aftershave lotion and the crop preserver anti-chafe ball deodorant okay incredible keeping it all fresh yes as am i okay love it Big fan. Uh, And the gift of Manscaped doesn't stop there. This bundle comes with two free gifts. Manscaped's Boxers 2.0 Premium Underwear, which, by the way, I steal all of Evan's Manscaped Boxers. I wear them. I love them. They are so comfy. I'm obsessed. So just as a heads up. And it also comes with the Shed 2.0 Toiletry Bag. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MOMDAD at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at Manscaped. 
manscaped.com and use code MOMDAD, maybe gift them Manscaped and unwrap your favorite present this year. All right, let's get back into the, uh, the seriousness. Yes. <laughs> He's very protective over mom. Interesting. Yeah, he's showing me being protective of mom. Now, sometimes when they show me something like that, it means that he might not have been like that on earth and he's now trying to make up for it. So oh, he's trying boy. to like make yeah. up for lost time type that of thing. Sense. Okay. That yeah. was their whole relationship was like pretty rocky their whole lives. And then my grandmother passed away. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of like, I think woke up to like, oh shit, mm -hmm. I have not been there. Right. And then the last like two years of his life, mm -hmm. they were really trying to kind of yeah. find okay. a life again. And like, your mom and, in, your grand, and her grandpa, dad. Yeah. Well, that's like, why he went over you, you know? and to the other side. Now he's carrying. So the way they were in their last two years, he's carrying that over. Yeah. He's watching over her and protecting her. Okay. Mm. So he might not have been like that on life. So he's being like that now. Yeah. And there was a lot of, there was a lot of like dying. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? A lot of kind of like, I wish we could have figured this out and mm -hmm. now it's the end. And you know, kind of, yeah, a lot of last minute, like, <clears throat> showing up mm -hmm. you know what well, i mean yeah listen as long as i always say if you show up in spirit if you show up at least you showed up yeah so he's mm. showing up now in spirit protecting yeah. her and watching her maybe let her know that okay like that. so that she knows it wasn't just those two years yeah okay mm. because when they show me something that's like vague like that like yeah. oh sure protecting me there's deep there's a deeper yeah. reason for that okay okay So now I'm just looking at you both because I want to feel like some energy stuff and see what else is going on truth-wise and in your souls. I want to see your soul. So Jess, there's another thing with you. Mm -hmm. And this is about being comfortable in your own, like in your own skin. Like you're a confident girl. We know that. But... The depth of you is sensitive. And there I don't know if when you were a kid, you were more insecure or mm -hmm. you weren't comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. Or like, you know, like just like feeling like, and I don't want to, because you're gorgeous, but like you didn't feel like the pretty girl when you were a kid. No, definitely you know? not. No. And I, yeah, mm -hmm. no, I really, I really struggle. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I struggled now a mm -hmm. lot with it too i'll go through phases yeah. for sure and and it's one of those things that like sometimes i feel shame talking about because mm -hmm. like my big thing that i want to preach is it's like you want to like love yourself yes and, and you should continue to preach that and my thing is it's just like exterior is bullshit mm -hmm. but i think because of the way i was growing up and the culture as is everybody yes. but it, you know for you specifically but I, your childhood i felt it pretty heavy mm -hmm. and so it's definitely a battle that mm -hmm. i have is is that for mm -hmm. sure well, yeah, you're doing a good thing, but when you said preach about it and, you know, be comfortable in your own skin now as an adult, like saying it, even though you don't feel it all yeah. the time, that's you doing it. So keep continue to do it. Cause that's like, that's beautiful because okay. there are so many people feel like that. So you're helping them. Okay. Okay. And you'll get to that. You'll get there. <sighs> you will get there, but it shows up yeah. energy wise. It shows up. It's like, and people who don't meet you up front who don't have maybe this this ability wouldn't even know it. So, but we know it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you just need a love and a hug. I want to give you a big hug. You know, you <laughs> like, just. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need it. Come here. Oh. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you need a lot. You need a lot of that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Does that resonate? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, You're a big softy. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And yeah. I think one of the things, too, is and <laughs> when I hugged you, I was feeling it and I was kind of like downloading a little. Let yourself be, take it. Let yourself receive it. Get it. 
like let yourself have it because you deserve it. You're such a, such a beautiful soul. Like I felt your soul there. It's so sweet. It's so loving. It's so caring. You deserve that. Let yourself receive it. Like it almost felt like somewhere or another when you were younger, you didn't get the hug. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. man. <laughs> yes. so laughing. Yeah. Um, yeah mm -hmm. You know, I, um, God, I love my mom mm -hmm. and dad so much. They were really amazing parents yeah. and they are amazing parents. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people just, they speak different love not languages. Yeah, not physically affected. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, I am a love bug. Yes. And I yes. need a lot of physical affection and like words of affirmation and mm -hmm. bless my sweet family. Everyone in my family, they are acts of service. They are doers mm -hmm. and they love hard, but they love mm -hmm. by helping and fixing. Instead of the hugging and, and the touching. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so like literally my mom and I would joke, I was homeschooled for a while and mm -hmm. she's like, I got to have to send you back to school because you wouldn't get off me because I just want to be like in her lap, right. you like, like you know, like reading and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. And so it's, 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 I've noticed as I've gotten older and I literally talked to Evan about it uh, mm -hmm. recently because I am like, I, by nature, am so someone who I want to look at you and mm -hmm. be like, ah, like, let you know. I'm like, I love you so much. Like, yep. I feel this way when I'm around you and, and I'm so touchy. Mm -hmm. Um, and the older I've gotten, because I think I didn't receive that. I have a hard time letting, like you were saying, yes, letting myself. You're not, you're, you're not, you weren't, you weren't shown that. Yeah. And it's not, and it's, you need it. Yeah. Just know this, that sometimes, like, my parents are the most amazing people, too. Yeah. But I was this very sensitive little boy. Mm -hmm. I was the only boy with three sisters, and they didn't they didn't know how to have a sensitive son. Yeah. So they didn't, they didn't let me be that. Now I'm going to cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So parents just don't know sometimes. They didn't know. They raised you how they would raise a kid, how they know. They didn't know you, Jess, needed the touch yeah. and the kisses and the hugs and the coddling and the cradling. They just didn't know better. So now get it as an adult. Okay. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> get it. Make up for lost time. Like now what I'm doing is so I used to fight my sensitivity mm -hmm. and I used to hide in the shed crying because my guy, the guy friends didn't invite me to the thing that they were all doing together. Yeah. But I didn't show my parents I would cry. I would hide and cry. Yeah. Now I don't give a shit. If I'm going to cry, I'm going to cry. Or I'm going to be sensitive. Or I'm going to use my abilities. I used to hate these. I used to be like, I don't want to... I'm going to use these abilities to help and to help heal. So, And I forgive my parents for not realizing I was a sensitive little soul. Such a sensitive little soul. Yeah. Feeling everything. And then hiding by myself. Parents just don't know. Yeah. They're humans. That's the thing. It's mm. like when I think about my mom and my dad, I just adore them. And that's, I think, sometimes when I process things, even on this podcast, where I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, they were such exactly. good so parents. Good. Yes. And they love me so much. Mm. And they lo and they loved and love me so much. Of course. But yeah, sometimes people are different. Exactly. They, yes. You know, yes. my little sister is wired like them. And Ex she I was feels, just going to say. Yeah, mm. she they feels so have, loved yes. and supported by them. And yes. she feels it like, because they all kind of are wired the same way. And I know they adore me. But yes. I'm like, God damn, I'm hug not, me. Yes. <laughs> Kiss me. Tell uh -huh. me how much She's you love me. She's definitely a weirdo. It's you know true. what I mean? Weirdo they the all kind of speak the same language. And then they're yeah. all like, we love Jess, but we don't really know <laughs> what like, we don't is going on with her. You know, She just needs a hug. She just needs more physical, more affection like that. And you know what? That I was just gonna say, I bet you your sibling was it was just like them, yeah. And that's you know, and it's the black sheep thing, yeah. You know, we yeah. just again, it's not a negative thing. It's just who we are, yeah. Separate from what they knew, so they're just. I think parents sometimes when there's multiple kids, they go on auto. So they would, you know, just raise them like that. That's how we know how to raise a kid. This is the plan. And yeah. hopefully you fit in that plan. Yeah, Otherwise, sure, sure. <laughs> you're yeah. going to be crying alone in the shed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> relatable, relatable. Yes. But get those hugs now. Okay. Get that physical attention now. Know that that's a thing you need more than knowing it. Okay. Evan, mm -hmm. it's time to quadruple exactly. up. Yes. <laughs> yes. Evan's already on, like, on mm -hmm. just 24 7 hug just Good. mode. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> good. And the physical affection's good for you. Yes. Okay, good. So let's see Evan's soul. Hmm. 
So interestingly enough, you're actually stepping into yourself. It's your mm. sensitivity. You always hid that too. Like for you, it was being tough or being like strong or being like, you know, the strong, tough guy. But now you're letting the sensitivity come through more. That's who you really are. You're a softy. Yeah. You really are sensitive. <laughs> and yeah. you know, when you say you're not the crier, you're a crier and it's okay to cry because you got that shit bottled up. It's like inside you. Mm -hmm. It's okay to let it out. They show me even in the past, have you cried in the car? <laughs> that you cry in the car, like you go to the car to cry or you cry in the car. Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only place I cry. Yeah. Yes. We li we talk about it often because I'm always just you know okay so me you mm -hmm. know hug me twenty four yeah, seven yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm like cry in front of me bitch <laughs> yeah, no. I want to see you I want to be yeah. your tears to be pouring through my hair like mm -hmm. <laughs> like yep. let's cry together and Evan's always like I cry all the time but I only cry in the car yep. like that's they his showed thing me. Uh, yeah they I don't cry me. all the time but like <laughs> but when yeah, I cry so I cry folks, in the car yeah that's what they show I think me. it's it's like there's just it's like the only moment that like I'm I'm truly like. For some reason, you just away let it from out it there. all, you yeah. Know? And it's like I think that no one can see me, and that's like I'm completely ice. I'm moving right. in isolation. You know, it's like yeah, there's right. no it's way. Your, it's your little yeah, isolation yeah, yeah. box. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. yeah, they showed me literally you crying in the car, and they said to me, "That's his only mm. place that he'll let it out." So we don't want you on the road crying. So get it out in the house. <laughs> Not the safest thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah, let it out with just let it out. I mean. Maybe what you can do is feel that feeling, the safety that you feel in the car. Yeah. Feel it in a in the house somewhere. We don't obviously you don't need to be crying everywhere, but like when it when it feels like it needs to come out, don't hold it in. Okay. Mm. Let it out. Mm. <laughs> so I feel like with with Evan, um, and I've really noted it lately too, is like he is like such he's like very daddy energy mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and it's he's mm -hmm. always very much like taking care help to take care of me yeah. through like so much of my mental health mm -hmm. struggles like yep. since we were in high we were sort of dating in high school oh, wow. you know that's and, beautiful and he's just soulmates, uh, soulmates uh -huh. like like beyond and uh, like such a blessing he's such an amazing man and he's yep. always just like really Mm -hmm. been there to help me and like lift me up always and you know i have some a couple really really close girlfriends and mm -hmm. it's always the joke it's like evan's daddy evan takes care of everybody Aww. you know you're like this quiet person who makes sure everything is like functioning and working and good so we can all be like happy around him mm -hmm. um and so i feel like sometimes that's what like keeps you like tight like you feel like you can't have those breakdowns sometimes you know yeah i think mm -hmm. that's something i've been feeling a lot yeah is like like where do i go mm -hmm. you know and it's mm -hmm. like it's just the nature of life but like mm -hmm. and it, uh, you know i think that's what's hard i think that's why mm -hmm. like you even showing up mm -hmm. is like making me emotional because mm -hmm. it's just like i don't know like there's someone else you're doing something yeah you know right. what i'm saying I get it. oh yeah yeah like like, you could, like like you were here the torch you we're here to it. listen to you yeah and hear what you have to say and like you're kind of taking the lead on like mm -hmm. this conversation even and like this path mm -hmm. and i think like there's even a letdown of just energy for me there mm -hmm. of like oh, i can just kind of you mm -hmm. know i don't know what oh, it well, is i can you. just kind of set that down and just let you do what you're doing and like that's also how i feel with i was telling you my guy edward who's like my guru mm -hmm. guy is it's like it, I'm in a moment with him where it's like he just kind of like lets me load off. Mm -hmm. And I think like there's just very few spaces in my life where like mm -hmm. I know how to do that. Like that, I, that I'm that i able to re relinquish control or just relax and be in a space where I feel like I could be vulnerable enough mm -hmm. to even possibly cry. Mm -hmm. Like even the other day I was like, I felt like weird. I almost felt like, am I like losing it? No. Because like, I You're felt growing. so like. Mm. You're growing. But I felt like really strange about the fact that like there's moments where i feel very like sensitive mm -hmm. and then certain moments recently where i felt like nothing mm -hmm. and it's That's, almost yeah. like weirding me out like how l like lack like how emotionless i've been in certain like things mm -hmm. that normally would have caused emotion in me and it's almost like the muscle is weak no you know like i haven't break. allowed myself to get there or something i don't know it's like 
the feeling I'm feeling when you talk and say that is it's your brain taking a rest mm. when you're feeling that emotionless stuff because you're doing the work. Spirit said to me, you're stepping into yourself. You're doing that work. So that's why you're feeling those moments of sensitivity and you're letting it out, be it just in the car and in right, here now. Right, right. You're letting it out still. So eventually you want to get to a place where you can let it out wherever, or you're not holding it in, or you're not feeling shame about it, or you're not feeling like you have to be a certain way. Just be. If only we can all just be. Mm. All of us. I mean, I deal with anxiety and my own stuff when, you know, when I'm not in this hat. Mm. I have my own stuff going on. So. Right. If all of us could just be, what a better place, A, the world would be, yeah. what a better place we would all be in. So that's what you need to be, just mm. be. Okay. And when it's emotionless, they're making me feel it's your brain actually just taking a rest. I'm not a doctor or a psychologist, but that's what they're making okay. me feel. So in, actually enjoy that time. Yeah. Don't feel bad about it. Okay. Let your fucking brain rest because you're yeah. doing the work. Okay. 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 I appreciate that. And thank you for letting me like do this for you, you know, like, that so, cause I love doing this. This is my favorite thing about this work is like the, like getting in there, you know, yeah. yes, getting messages from spirits, cool. And the past loved ones, but getting in there, I love that. And yeah. when people let me in, it's, it's such a gift to me as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you for letting me in. Oh, okay. Thank you. thank you so much. Yeah. <sighs> so let me see if there's anything yeah. else. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, is there anything else I can squeeze out of you? I'm like, oh my like God. ring me dry, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I know what Evan is like, struggles with like the, the, the feeling, the, all the emotion and the carry. I'm like, uh -huh. I'm like, babe, I'm like, if I can, if I can carry a burden for you, it's those emotions. Yes, I'm like, pile them yes. on. I'm like, that I yes. can, I can do, you know? Yeah. I'm you, like, I think you will because they're making yeah. me feel that he's doing, he's getting, you're, you're opening up. Oh, you're getting yeah. to your yeah. true soul's intention. And you are supposed to be that sensitive caregiver mm. and caretaker. You yeah. know, mm. he's mama. That's why your daughter <laughs> loves you. They say your daughter loves you so much. Oh, she loves her like daddy. just, yeah. Like, and what a gift for a little girl mm. to have that role model of, of a father. Mm. Mm -hmm. They also say that you make her, she finds you funny. <laughs> they said she thinks he's funny. Oh and, you know? No. That's our relationship. <laughs> yeah. is, That's the relationship. Just having fun together They're just and being yeah. silly. Like, just these two are just two peas in a pod, just cracking up 24 okay, seven. Yeah, they, they show me the laughter. And, and they're the, both yeah. like fun. They're just sarcastic. They're just giving each other they a hard time. They also bicker like an old married yeah, couple. They, you know, they, like, they, they just, bicker yeah. and they just. <laughs> We're just funny together. They're just funny, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're We're besties. so cute. They're so cute. All right, so uh, Nana, she's like, <laughs> she's like, if you're wrapping it up, I gotta talk. To her. I gotta say, don't forget about me. Do you remember when you were young? Was it there's something with trick or treating, and like some Halloween costume? Okay. Okay. Do you was she ever around for any of the Halloweens? I mean, because there's something about, or let me ask you this. Yeah. This year, did what? Did your daughter have like a specific costume, or was there something special that happened with trick or treating? Because some Nana's making me feel like something being there for trick or treating. Do you remember if anything happened? Oh, let um, me think. Was your grandmother pat? Was she, did anything happen during trick or treating that you was a sign from grandma or like a thing like oh that reminds me of her. Because she's making me feel like something about trick or treating. Trick or treating, I'm trying to think. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't jump out at you, don't worry yeah, about it. No. But she's showing me something about trick or treating. I'm. Let me ask this: Is there a picture of you with her when you were younger for Halloween? Because now she's showing me a picture. A photo. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't know about in, in my my costume. I, the only thing that I'm mm -hmm. that I'm that might be connected right now to, to Nana is costumes. What about the costumes? Well, actually, you know what? Mm -hmm. You know what? On uh, the day of Halloween, before we went trick-or-treating, mm -hmm. Ember had rehearsal. Okay. She, 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 yeah, she changed into her costume at, right after rehearsal. So Ember is currently in a musical okay. right now. She auditioned. Yeah. It was like a whole big thing. Mm -hmm. And the musical that she didn't even know, she didn't even know what the, the musical was going to be. And it's, um, it's my Nana's 
favorite musical. Okay, because I was going to say, does it connect to Nana? And, and I'm, because, I was okay. thinking costumes too, because Ember's been like then putting the costumes on. She's got right. a bunch of costume changes in the musical. Okay. And then that day that we went trick or treating, she was doing, she mm-hmm. was in her costume mm-hmm. at rehearsal before yeah. and then changed into another. Okay, so she had the costume. Halloween costume at that rehearsal. So maybe Nana's saying she so- sees her in the play or whatever, the musical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, maybe. that's because I, that's, that's Nana's when it happened to be that that was the first musical that that my daughter ever auditioned for and mm-hmm. then got a part okay. in it's this it's musical that my nana it just it's 24 7 that was just like her favorite and my daughter always you know we talk about oh no mm-hmm. i bet nana is watching and is Aww. so proud and okay you know. well i think she's acknowledging the halloween aspect of it okay and the costume and maybe if it doesn't you know i'm not sure to be honest with you yeah mm-hmm. it might be that okay but she's showing me a picture so there's a picture with the costume or the Halloween. It might make sense to you later. Okay. There mm-hmm. might be something that jumps out. Yeah. So, no, I'm going to process that yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, even then my past Halloweens too, to be honest, because mm-hmm. that she, we were together so much. When you were, when you were younger. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, my whole life she was like, it was I'm 24-7. Getting a, I'm almost getting a vintage feel of this picture okay. in the Halloween costume. Okay. And Nana's make me feel a special memory about this Halloween. Mm. So if it doesn't jump out at you, I don't like to make it yeah. work. So I'm going to ask my mom. Yeah, too. exactly. Because mm. it might have been when I was when I was younger. It feels special to Nana. Okay. Okay. And I feel like if it was the play, she would have shown me a musical or okay. a play. Okay. 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 Let's see what else. Now what I'm doing is just asking for last messages. Any last words? Because what's interesting is I feel your sadness about the end of this session. I feel that energy. (laughs) (laughs) But all good things must come to an end. Of course. This is interesting. Um, Someone showed me a unicorn. Do you know if anyone was a unicorn for Halloween? I mean, Ember's definitely been a unicorn for Halloween. Okay, there's some, <laughs> yeah. She's showing me the unicorn for some reason. Yeah. Huge unicorn she's thoughts like, for like the... Ember's first five years of her life. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, okay. so yes. everything was unicorns. Yeah. And Nana was still around then, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and Ember was always multiple things for Halloween, mm-hmm. and then the unicorn costume was, was a stage. consistent. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, because she's yeah. showing me the unicorn. That for sure, she's yes. showing me the unicorn, <laughs> and she's mentioning Halloween. <laughs> okay. So maybe that's just a validation again, because mm. she's laughing. She's like laughing. She's like joking and laughing. Yeah, she was a very, she was a very joyful woman. Mm. She makes me feel. I don't know how she passed, but she doesn't want you to think of her struggle. She's saying like, forget that pain that I the the struggle. Okay. Mm. <sighs> she um. Mm-hmm. Did she lose weight? She was definitely a little thinner, but Mm -hmm. it was so interesting because we've wondered exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've felt like moments of feeling like fearful of Mm -hmm. like if she was in pain. Right. She's saying she wasn't. She wasn't. Okay. She wasn't. Like, she's like, forget that. Okay. Don't think about it. (laughs) Because what happened was, Mm -hmm. um, she, she was, you know, in her like mid Mm nineties and this was somewhat recent and Mm -hmm. she, um, was losing a little weight, but you know, a health thing here and there, but fine. Mm-hmm. Still living alone, like could mm-hmm. handle living alone. And my mom came, went to go visit her on Mother's Day in the morning because we're all going to get together. And she had passed away in bed in the middle of the night. Interesting. And yes. she looked so peaceful. Mm-hmm. And it it was like, is this like, was it as peaceful as it looked? But of she course I thought like in my mind, Ugh. like she was just like curled up sweet, like smile on her face. And, and I've thought, I'm like, I wonder like what happened and was it painful? But to know the validation. Yeah, that she, she literally said, forget what, what did I say? Forget the pain yeah. or forget the struggle. Mm-hmm, forget mm-hmm. the struggle. She's, yeah. She said she, there was no pain, Nothing. no struggle. Mm. So forget that. Okay. Since you've been asking that in your mm-hmm. head, that's why she's saying that. Forget that struggle. Forget that pain. Okay. She, there was none of it. May we all pass like Nana. I oh, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so you mm. can let that go. Okay. There was no struggle, no pain. Hmm. But the weight loss thing she mentions. Mm-hmm. 
She definitely got really skinny at the end there. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. was something else going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she um, was diabetic okay. her, her whole life. And um, so she was always, you know, that was always just kind of in and out of the hospital mm -hmm. uh, occasionally because of that and like towards the end of her life. So, yeah. So there might have been something going on there with like, I don't know what diabetes does, but maybe one of her organs was like going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, there was something. Oh, yeah. No, there was, it was, um, it was the kidneys mm -hmm. definitely were. There yeah. was a struggle. She was kind of in and out with, with a lot of... So the in and out part, I think that's also the struggle she's saying forget about. Mm. Okay. Like the having to go in and out of the doctors. Okay. Okay. Because I'm trying to just understand why she's saying that. My mom and her, at the end, like, again, she was, for a woman in her 90s, mm -hmm. like, I mean, she was doing well mm -hmm. but in the last few months um i i would say my mom was you know taking her back and forth and mm -hmm. i know she was worried about that because she always bless her she was always like didn't want to be a burden and all right. of us were like no nana we want to take care of you yeah. um the only other thing was her memory was going mm -hmm. in and out it was like the last sure. two years that was the decline where but, she would she would forget things mm -hmm. and that was unusual um yeah. for her well, she doesn't want you guys to remember any of, any of that stuff. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> like oh, that's, that's nothing's more like her than like. That's I don't what I want you to. Yeah, she's like the perfect image of me. That's you know? what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I'm, she keeps making me feel like forget about the struggle. <laughs> forget about the struggle. She literally. She doesn't want you remembering the in and the shipping her around, the memory stuff, yeah. the weight loss, the you know. That's what I keep getting. Okay. That's what I'm trying to interpret. Yeah. Okay. Understood. She keeps saying, forget about the struggle. Forget about that. There she just is, wants us to remember her. And Nana, we will. Fabulous that yeah. woman, she literally sent uh, probably about eight months before she passed. Mm -hmm. She had us take a glamour photos of her to mm -hmm. send out to all of her relatives over in Switzerland because she's like, they need to see how amazing I look. Yes. So she yes. had us take glamour photos and send them out. Yes. Like that was, that was not that. Yeah, yes. just flexing. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. love that. Well, And she probably, you know what? Maybe she felt herself like because she wasn't herself. Yeah. You know how we yeah. see ourselves more magnified? Maybe yeah. she felt like there was more like, you know, they think that there's some, you know, that I'm not. She didn't like yeah, that. Exactly, yeah. 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 So she's like, well, her, she just is like laughing and being herself. Okay. I feel like letting Nana have the last word. I love that. You know? Yeah. Nana. Yeah. Nana. She deserves it. Is, was the, the matriarch, oh. honestly. That's what I feel. I feel like she was like, but she's also very patient. Like she let me do all this other stuff. There are sometimes spirits where like, it's just got to be about me. But she was very like, she showed up first and then she was like very like let let it, them do I never felt her coming to nag until the end when she realized I was wrapping up she came back to say I kind of want to be the last she's <laughs> does that make sense yes I guess it's so nana <laughs> she, yeah. Claire um, was just this I mean literally she's an angel mm -hmm. like she just was joyful and the matriarch and she was like that she was the type of person who would be like let everyone have their word and mm -hmm. would so patiently sit and listen but she does always want to have the final moment she was just... an incredible ability to say very little mm -hmm. yes to that's... be super patient mm -hmm. super kind yes. but then always get what she wants yes <laughs> like that's really it. hard to describe like <laughs> That's literally she, what I feel She feeling. literally would be the most, like, you just would never think of her in that way of, like, a person who get what she wants, but then mm -hmm. you'd, oh, she always would somehow get it. Mm -hmm. And you're always just like, how did you do that? And it was like, so you'd know exactly when to, like, speak up. You and know? that's literally what she was doing. Like, yeah. She was like, she was like speaking up first and then finishing, like, the period. And, you know? and Nana having the last word is, yes. I feel like, the right thing. I, I absolutely It's agree. what she would have wanted. Yeah, and it's I want to give it to her. <laughs> it's what she always used to say yeah. about my grandfather who passed away um, quite a bit before her, who was the love of her life. She would always be like, she would get whatever way she wanted because she'd wrap it by saying, it's what your boppy would have wanted. Yeah. And then you couldn't argue with that. So, <laughs> Do you remember her sitting on his lap at all? Oh it, my Because gosh. that's what she's doing now. She's like sitting on his lap. And she's like, does that make sense? <laughs> they were so affectionate. Yeah, they used to embarrass my mom, yeah. her and her brother all the time when they were younger. Because it was like, you know, in the 60s, it was a little more like they were like in a conservative uh -huh. neighborhood. And they're like, oh my God, mom and dad were always just like yeah. spooning. And, yeah. Yeah. No, she's literally on his lap. 
Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Wow. Well, thank you guys oh for my God. Thank you. opening up. Oof. Thomas, um, thank you so much. No, my, I, thank you for opening up like that because being able to work with people that are open, I always tell people that come to me like, come to me because this is something you believe in. This is something that you, if you're a skeptic about it, to be honest with you, I might not be the one because yeah. I yeah. want to work with people that are, I believe this, let's do it. Yeah. Because I don't, I'm not here to convince people it's real. It's hard enough to do this, to be honest. Like, <laughs> it really is. Let alone having you like trying to trick me and fix right, the fingers. Right, it's like, right. please just give me a break. Like, yeah. don't come, you know, like, yeah. and there are other, you know, like clairvoyance people that are like, sure. And I've had those skeptics creep in and then yeah. they're like, oh my God, you blew my, you're blowing my, you got me there. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not trying to get you. Right. <laughs> and it's so much more fun for me when you're already just into it and you believe yeah. it and you know that it's real. Like, you know, if you need convincing, I might not be the one, you know, like mm -hmm. I, I love people to come to me who are ready to do the work yeah. because then I can feel, cause I'm sensitive as shit. So <laughs> yeah. I don't want to feel like, am I missing? Am I not doing the right thing? Yeah. Am I failing? Am I, am I not understanding? Cause then if that's happening, I'm like getting in my head and I can't connect easily. Right. So you guys are open and you, I, that's the kind of people I love to work with because you're just here ready for it yeah. and you understand what I'm doing and you're opening yourself up and letting me read your souls. Because I say, in order for me to connect to spirit, I have to connect to the spirit in front of me. Mm. So just, you know, that's, thank you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, this was like such a gift. Mm -hmm. I can't wait mm -hmm. to listen and watch this again yeah. and reprocess everything. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. Anytime. Seriously. Thank you. And the journey we've been on in the past three years. I this know. has been awesome. No, yeah, thank I, you for being a part of it. it and it's helped so me much. get my message out as well. I, I have know? like, okay, so please, mm -hmm. it's going to be, by the way, everybody in the episode notes on YouTube and in the podcast, but like, please, mm -hmm. if people want to yes. work yeah, with you, like, yeah, you could go to my Instagram and you, well, first you can just go to the website if you'd want to just do, you know, like go to qandthomas.com. It's K E W E N Thomas.com. Mm -hmm. And you could just book, uh, request booking. The information's there. And then I'll just get your, I'll just text you back. So you could do it that way. Or you can go on Instagram. I prefer you doing it through the website because it's just easier that way. Perfect. And then, you know, like Instagram, then I'm DMing. I have to get, just yeah. go through the website. You know, if you want to add me on Instagram and say hi, yeah. totally add <laughs> yeah. me. I'm ThomasDale5. <laughs> And you could say hi and totally, you know, I, all the love is, ne is yeah. necessary yes, as well. Yes, yes, give the follow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's fine too. If you want to be private on Instagram, so this way, you know, because I don't, I'm not looking at your Instagram. So right. that's, <laughs> yeah. But that's fine too. Yeah. But you know, just say hi if you want, or just go through the website. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. Anytime. Thank you guys. Oh, it was so great to do really it in person. It. It. I know. This so was so wonderful nice. to you know? do it in person, and I. This was a gift, and I also can't wait to come see you do the stand up. I know that'll be fun. Let, yeah, yes. next time I'm on at that. the improv or something, that'll be I'm fun. I would love that. I would I'm love that. By. It means a lot. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks Seriously, for having me. It we means love a lot. You. It's been, oh, I love, love you too. I'm going to be kind of vibing on this for a little bit and probably going to sleep incredibly tonight. So yeah. I appreciate oh, that. I, that honestly uh, gives me tingles. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. My little Pisces moon is yeah. like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm getting red or if I'm like blushing right yeah. now. <laughs> We love, we, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I you. love you guys too. Well, that was Thomas Dale. Yes. I mean, <laughs> like you heard us say at the beginning of this episode, that was meant a lot for yeah, us. Yeah, meant a lot. We love you so much, Thomas. And I do want to say this as well. Um, after Thomas left, I was really like processing and racking my mm -hmm. brain about the Halloween photo with my Nana. Yeah. And it all came together. For really? Mm-hmm. What was it? So, I mean, who knows? I'm going to have to connect with Thomas again, maybe at some other point, mm -hmm. and see if this is what he was feeling or getting from my Nana. Um, but I believe what it is, is during, um, well, last week, I shared with you about that dream that I woke up from where I was bawling when I woke up from the yeah. dream. Mm -hmm. And then I told you about the whole thing. And yeah. it was a dream that was like, I swear my Nana came to me in that dream. And literally in the dream, there was like a recording that I played from my Nana mm. to me. And it was like the most healing thing that I really needed so desperately. Mm -hmm. 
um, in that moment. And in the dream, <laughs> it's a long dream to explain, so I'm not going to get into the details, but essentially we started and we were like at Disneyland at the beginning and it was Halloween and we were all dressed up. Oh. So it was like, you were there, you're dressed up, me and Katie, Ember, we were all dressed up going. And then we went on these certain rides and went through this journey. And then we got down to like, we found this thing, but we, we were in Halloween costumes. It was a Halloween celebration at Disneyland. And at the end of this dream, I opened this box and there was a photo, an old picture of my Nana in it with a recording device with her voice telling me something. Mm. So I'm like, maybe that's the Halloween <clears throat> like vintage photo with yeah. her crossover. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, if anything, like I know he was saying that it was a really special memory, but that's kind of what I right away attached it to yeah. because I, when I woke up from that dream, I was like, that was my Nana last night. Like I know it was my Nana and yeah. maybe that moment from Thomas was like the, the confirmation of like, Hey, that was a really important special memory for us. Yeah. Maybe symbolizing like it was a memory because yeah. it was me. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't. Yeah, I think that's. I think the beautiful thing about this, what I like about it, is like, you know, it was like what he said, which is like, you're gonna. There's gonna be things just coming, yeah. and, and and a lot of things will make sense, and there'll be occasionally things that don't. We don't even know. We'll just keep moving, and yeah. I think that's really powerful. So it's like this memory. You know, at the very end when he was saying that, we were we were kind of like searching a little bit. It's like. Who knows? In time, that might become something. Yeah. We might discover a picture. We, who knows? Or we just we just move on from that. And I think there was so many things that we in person with him that we yeah. connected with. Oh my gosh! That it like everything. <laughs> I actually kind of love that certain things we don't understand. Yeah, because it true. feels more like realistic, which is like it's a conversation, right? Like yeah. you're just things are happening, and then certain things connect and certain things don't. So yeah. I just I found that to be very. No, that was powerful. I locked onto that though because I'm like after yeah, because you were like. Now I want to know what well, happened. Well, you know, yeah. after that dream too, I was like bawling, telling everybody yeah. in our family about it because it meant so much yeah, to me. Right. And I was like, okay, it was Halloween in my dream at Disneyland. And yeah. Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Anywho. But man, the poking thing was unbelievable. That killed me. That was so my like, Nana. Like, yeah, there could be nothing more. Oh my God. <laughs> Claire. I mean, that is such a classic Claire thing. It's just like poking you. So specific. <sighs> Anywho, it was such anyway. a gift. Um, should we do a call home Absolutely. to wrap this up? Let's Say hi to it. the family. Remember, you can always call home. Hi, Mom and Dad. Hi. I'm in a bit of a predicky, and I could definitely use some advice. So <laughs> I recently became official with this guy after a few dates. I'm in my mid-20s, and it's my first romantic relationship of any kind, other than like a hinge date a while ago. And from observing my friends' relationships over the years, I know that he is a great boyfriend. He's thoughtful. He admits when he's wrong. I really like his friends, and I really want to become friends with their girlfriends because they seem great. He also invited me to join his D&D campaign, which is something I've been wanting to get into, Love. but you can't really do it unless you know people who already do it. But the issue that I'm having is we haven't kissed yet, and I'm dreading it. I just feel awkward about it. I'm scared. I feel weird being touchy with him. Wow. Mm. And I can't tell if it's I'm unattracted to him or if it's just fear and awkwardness due to this being my first relationship and like yeah. romantically basically being like a 13 year old. So I don't know what I should do if I should break it off. There's also like other kind of factors. We were friends before this and I do genuinely want to stay friends with him in some capacity but I know that if we broke up he's the kind of person where we wouldn't be able to be friends mm. so I'm just very confused and I don't know what to do please help bye okay hmm. well I will say hearing especially too that you know you all were friends before and that you know that the way that he's wired is that if this doesn't go, you know, if it doesn't move forward as a relationship and doesn't work out, then that you won't be able to be friends. I totally then understand like a deep sense of anxiety there where you're like, okay, well, I don't want to mess this up and I really value this person and I don't want to mess up this friendship. But now we've kind of like made it into this romantic thing. Um, This is tough. You know, I... 
I don't know if this is the right answer, but I would say do everything in your power to just stop thinking about it. Just stop thinking about the kiss. Stop putting that pressure on yourself of should we be kissing? When is it going to happen? I'm feeling this anxiety about it because I really don't think that any sort of physical affection is any pressure that you should put on yourself. Like that's not something that you should put pressure on like needing to do if that's not something that you feel comfortable doing or want to do, right? Um, So I don't feel like it's unless it's all of a sudden something that you're like, I really want to do this, then do it, right? But if you're like, I'm not feeling like this is something I don't like the way I feeling thinking about this I would just do your very best to just try to take that pressure away and just exist day to day with this person when you see him just as is and if at one point he leans in and you decide this is the moment then go for it or if then at one point you're like I'm ready I want to do it then go and you know lean in and you go for it And then we'll see what comes of that. But make sure it's fully in a moment where you are like, this is what I want to do right now. And sure, maybe you're going to feel anxious and nervous, which that's, you know, that's completely, um, that's completely understandable of, but of course that first kiss moment. But if it's anything other than that, and you're like, I'm not wanting to do this because I don't like the way that it's making me feel, then don't, you know, and, and go from there. That's, that's what I would say. Okay. Um, agree with all that. There's two things that concern me. Number one is the, one of the last things you said, which was knowing him, we couldn't be friends if we broke up. If I'm just being honest with you, that just sounds weird. And I don't even know if you know what that means. It just felt like that was a natural thing. You just, it just, you kind of just said it. Yeah. And I think that says something. Mm. Cause I think it's a green flag when you, like, unless things go sour that you can, part ways kindly with people and be yeah. like we tried especially and if you were friends before I'm, that's yeah. exactly what i'm saying yeah. it's like you're friends you try it and then you move on why is that not a thing maybe your gut is telling you this isn't an emotionally like safe vibe and i don't mean safe in like a danger way i mean safe in just a, like a something in your body the fact that you're saying i'm dreading a kiss i'm yeah. dreading feeling like intimate towards him i'm you know, not into the idea of being romantic. And I'm kind of going, okay, that that might just be your body telling you something like this isn't a right fit. And then you're saying, oh, and we couldn't be friends afterwards. Like this is way too much pressure. Yeah. And and, like you're battling way too much for something that should be like very easy for you. Mm -hmm. And so like, if you like someone, it should be like, you're feeling it. Like you can't really help yourself. You're liking them. You get a crush, Mm -hmm. whatever. But it, it sounds almost like, you like them for the exterior things like the friends and the this and the that, but not really maybe just genuinely right. the connection. That's my vibe. Or their friendship. That's what I'm saying. Right? Like friendship, yeah. their friends, yeah. the D and D, whatever, whatever. But I'm not catching like a just genuine, like romantic connection. And I feel like, I don't know, trust your gut on this one. Yeah. For you know, sure. like if you're also feeling like, you know what, maybe I'm just so you knew you knew to the relationship thing. I've never even had feelings for anybody yet. So I'm like, whatever, explore that. But I also say like the body generally can kind of send signals to you that like there's something here or not. And it sounds kind of not. So that's the vibe. And like you were saying, yeah, agree with you, Evan. And like you were saying, you know, this is a new thing for you. So of course there are going to be nerves there. But when you're like having those moments, again, like I said before, listen to yourself, right? And Just do what you want to do and what you feel comfortable doing. Don't do something because you feel like you, you know, you're like, okay, it's time at this point for us to kiss. And I don't feel like don't do it then. Tap into that. And remember, you know, you're having all of these positive things that you're feeling, the friendship, the connection you guys have, the D&D excitement, all of that. Um, Remember, like, you don't have to rush. You know what I mean? Like if you're feeling all these things, let yourself process it, continue to be friends with this person uh, or continue to be close with this person in that way of the way that you feel comfortable and move slowly with what your body is telling you, how you're feeling and let yourself process it and let, you know, work through the things that Evan was talking about, but you don't have to rush yourself. You know what I mean? It's not like overnight decision, like yes, no, whatever, just flow through it. Love it. If that makes sense.
Um, we love you. We love you guys. We love you all. And we will we will talk to you on Monday yes. about this Golden Bachelor finale. Looking forward to it, y'all. Can't wait. Love you. Love you all. Bye. Bye.